All right, welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim, and I'd like to welcome all of you to uh, our meeting tonight, featuring Karina, a college regular, who's gonna be talking about how to be a cheapskate in Chicago. The college consists of the following format. First, we have a brief announcements period. Then our speaker will then um, speak for up to about an hour. Then we'll entertain questions and answers. And then um, if uh, we will then get into our infamous rebuttal period, where we'll be able to speak on or off topic for a certain specified amount of time. Generally, we are open till about nine, but I'll keep the call open for as long as we can to see it that it's necessary. And uh, we got it's okay, Charlie, if you want to start the announcements period, we can uh, go right ahead and get it started when you're ready. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,624 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. <laughs> uh, first of all, we have a relatively new uh, Google email group which uh, if you go to our main page, our website, right at the center at the top, gives you send a blank email and you'll get an announcement or two each week on the upcoming program that week. We also have a meetup group which functions very much in the same fashion. We get one, maybe two emails a week, not a lot of traffic, on what the topic will be, the program description for the coming week. Okay, uh, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. On July 17th, um, we're having someone from the Toastmasters, the first timer, uh, Betty Jean be talking about do we have a U.S. political identity? She's still working on a description of her program, but she's all set and ready to go. So we're going to be discussing. I've never really thought about it. Do we have a U.S. political identity and what is it? On July 24th, we're going to be talking about theology and the uh, Secrets of the Life of Jesus and His Associates, an author of a book um, on the title. So that's on July 24th. On July 31st, uh, we're having not only one, but two organizations make presentations on voting. Uh, Indivisible Illinois, followed by a uh, group you may or may not be aware of called the uh, Swing Left. We have a 10 year plan uh, regarding voting in the United States, a topic currently in the news right now. So that's on July 31st. On the next Saturday, August the 7th, uh, the young world federalist. These are young individuals who wanna see one world government, which is probably a good idea, I say. Um, but the Young World Federalist will be on August the 7th. Uh, after that, um, we've got a, the next one we've already booked is on September 25th. The author will be returning. Uh, he did a tour of the United States by bicycle and he interviewed people during the pandemic to tell their stories um, and opinions and views regarding the pandemic. Uh, if you'd like to speak, the next open dates are August 14, 21, and 28. And I may take one of those myself. I'm working on a program in which I go back in time to the cavemen. And I look, what was the life of the ordinary person like? What was the ordinary life like for the people of the earth. But I'm working on that. I may take one of those dates. Also, I just posted this on September the 4th. We generally have a speaker on the organized labor movement in the United States. That's Labor Day. 
So we're looking around for a speaker from the labor community. If you know of anyone in particular, uh, please get in touch with me. Okay, Tim, that's it for now. Take it away. All right. Uh, Karina, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, go ahead and uh, start sharing your screen. Our presentation's open. You have a good audience tonight. And uh, so present away. All right. Um, I have provided a cheat sheet, a Word document with a bunch of links. Uh, you should all have your computers open and you should have this document open. Uh, do you see a document in the chat called Free Stuff in Chicago? Yes, we have it open, Karina. Mm -hmm. You want to put your video on too? No, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I I don't see this. I did it. I see the download, but it's not in my download, so I don't know where it went. Try clicking again, and it'll click show you. Click on the view, and you can see it online, Ernie. If you want to click, I put a link up there, too. The well, one I don't see it on yours, but I, I you know, anyway. Okay, if anybody so anyway, wants it, they can send me an email, and I'll send it to them. Okay. How's okay. that? And now you'll also post it on a website, right, Charlie? Yeah, if you really, you need it, just send me an email. It's on the website, and I'll send you a copy. Thank you. Okay, okay Karina. Yeah, just, okay, so the first link uh, in my uh, in my uh, cheat sheet is Free Cycle, uh, and. The Free Cycle Network is made up of more than uh, 5,000 local town groups, 9 million members across the globe. It's grassroots, a uh, nonprofit, and people who are getting or getting stuff for free in their own towns and keeping good stuff out of landfills. Uh, the membership is free. Uh, everything posted must be free, legal, and not X-rated. Uh, but what happens is you can sign up for Free Cycle, uh, and you can you have to state what locale you're looking for, and you can either offer or you can um, state that you want something. Uh, the mission statement of Free Cycle. The mission is to build a worldwide sharing movement that reduces waste, saves precious resources, and eases the burdens of our landfills while enabling our members to benefit from the strength of a larger community. So let me show you what Free Cycle looks like. This is Free Cycle here. They just recently switched uh, to a new platform. Um, and you can either see things by a, a list or a grid. And you can either state, uh, you, you can offer things or you can see if there's something that other people want that you're willing to uh, provide. Um, these are things that are, are, are wanted by other people. If you have some sitting in your attic or your basement that, that you're not using, and these are things that people are offering. Um, oh. you want the fan on? Yeah. And, um, uh, so this is free cycle and I've used this. I have both off offered things and I have uh, requested things and got them for free. And this is a free cycle network. Um, a lot of people recently have been moving out of Chicago and there are some things that don't need to be thrown away, but they're not willing to move them. And so they're offering these things on, on free cycle. So that's the first resource that I have. There's an app that can be put on your computer or put on the phone, and the app is called Nextdoor, and that's my second link. Uh, so Nextdoor um, largely is concerns people talking about their neighborhoods, but they also have an uh, area called Finds, and if you then can click or you can then, as you can see, there's this free toggle here. And you can look at the list of um, things that are being offered for free. Uh, airtight glass jars, flower bases, furniture. Uh, these things are, are, these are also things that um, people are offering for free. And if you have some things you want to get it rid of, you can go into Nextdoor and offer your stuff for free. Um, 
this also works nicely. Uh, so that's free to, is that free to join, uh, Karina? Yes, this is free to join. This Nextdoor okay. app is free to join. Uh, you do have okay. to put in your information uh, so we know where you are. For example, uh, there's a Nextdoor Chicago and there's a Nextdoor Minneapolis, but uh, you want to be in Nextdoor Chicago. Um, and uh, so, so they want to know briefly where you're located, not precisely your address, but what neighborhood you're located in. And this is uh, Nextdoor. So what you can do is you can um, log into Nextdoor, then go into your finds and then click um, under finds, you can click the free toggle and you can see a, a list of things and you can post your own list of things that you're willing to uh, give out for free. Um, in the same app, there's also groups and one of the groups is called free stuff. And uh, this, this group also has, um, this may be a little bit of a wider um, area, but this group also is another place where people offer up things for free. There's this group. Um, one of my advice is that sometimes people, as you can see here, um, this person here is offering free kitchen stuff, but they say, um, everything will be out in the front steps, available first come first serve. And typically, if you have this type of situation, by the time you, if it's not immediately in your neighborhood, by the time you do walk in, the, by the time you get there, it's probably already been taken. Um, for example, the first, some of these items are metal. And metal, if you put, if you're in Chicago, from my experience, and you put metal on the curb, people will take it. Um, there's a lot of scavengers who do the great job of, uh, of diverting metal from the landfill and, and reselling it. Uh, but so here we are here and some of these have multiple pictures on them uh, too. Um, sometimes uh, with some of these people, they want you to take everything um, and maybe you'll have to push forward some of the things that you don't want. Uh, and then here you have somebody who's looking for things like looking for K-cups. Um, But uh, this, this is the, within Nextdoor, this is a group. So it's called, this group is, is called Free Stuff, I believe. Yeah, Free Stuff. And so that's, that's another link that I have. Facebook has groups too. And here under Facebook, I put in the word free box and I can see, this is nice because this is like closer to my just, my local neighborhood. You can see that there's free box or closest gratis um, groups um, in, in Chicago, Albany Park neighborhood, uh, the Lincoln Square neighborhood for those who live in Lincoln Square, Irving Park um, for those who live in the old Irving Park neighborhood. Um, we also have some other um, neighborhoods as well. But um, oh, here's, no, oh, that's Bronzeville Bike Box. But, but there's a handful of neighborhoods in Chicago and in, on FreeCycle, they have a free box group where they list uh, their items. And this is nice for people who wanna get stuff within walking distance. Um, and I've had fun with this Albany Park free box. I had, there's another group that's very similar to this and it's called Buy Nothing. Um, and as you can see here, it, this group was created to build community and to keep things out of landfills. And um, I have applied to buy nothing, but I haven't been accepted yet. But you can um, see here, there's, okay, so here's Chicago buy nothing in Humboldt Park, Wicker Park. We have Rogers Park. Um, and uh, there's one, I think for Albany Park Mayfair as well. How do you get out of the same? So you go into, what, what I would do is go into Facebook and then I would look for Buy Nothing and, um, or Buy Nothing Chicago and see what you can, um, this is a movement, I think it's rather similar to Free Cycle, um, or you could say Buy Nothing Groups Near Me. And, and when we, so you log into Free Cycle and then you, you see what, returns and the results. Um, yeah, here's Buy Nothing Rogers Park, Lakeview East, 
Logan Square, Old Town, Lincoln Park. And this allows you to do the free cycling, um, but you can do it um, without traveling because with free cycle or next door, you may end up traveling across the city. Um, and and, and um, so this is um, another nice, res oh, well, I haven't used buy nothing yet because I haven't been allowed in the group. The free box I've used and I've enjoyed, but the buy nothing, um, I haven't been allowed, I've applied, but they haven't uh, acknowledged me yet. This is one that I feel, uh, this is Craigslist and Craigslist also has uh, uh, free stuff, but I think that there are a lot of scammers and players on here. So um, if they, if it says free stuff, so everything should be free. And if they then start talking or haggling with you about money, then you're dealing with either somebody who doesn't understand English or somebody who's playing games with you. Uh, but but there are people who, let's say you bought a new refrigerator and you wanna get rid of your refrigerator. This is this is um, Chicago's free stuff. I would be careful with this. I, I don't know if I trust everyone um, with this or not. I'm sure there are some people who just wanna get rid of excess furniture or um, give away things that are taking up room, but I, um, I would be somewhat wary um, of this because I do believe that there are some scammers, but it may, it may pay off. Bait and switch tactics on Craigslist, a lot of those. Yes. What about um, bed bugs? That's another thing to be wary about. Do they do mattresses? Maybe they just don't do mattresses. No, people give away mattresses all the time. Okay. I guess you have to guess for yourself whether you'd want to risk that or not. Okay. Um, all around Chicago, we have little free libraries and these are uh, standing boxes full of books. Uh, in fact, a lot of these standing boxes have too many books and not enough takers, but we have these throughout Chicago. Uh, I think you have some that are not official little free libraries, but um, this little free library uh, website allows you to use a map and determine where some of the little free libraries are. Some people just will put a wooden box up and not register it as a pay the registration fee and officially register a little free library. Uh, but some of them are registered. So the Little Free Library, the mission, um, it's a nonprofit organization based in Wisconsin. Its mission is to be a catalyst for building community, inspiring readers, and expanding book access through a global network of volunteer-led Little Free Libraries. Our vision is a Little Free Library in every community and a book for every reader. We believe all people are empowered when the opportunity to discover a personally relevant book to read is not limited by time, space, or privilege. And um, so you have these little free libraries um, throughout, um, oh, I guess throughout the world. Um, and, and, and these are places you can pick up books and you can also drop off books. Um, I don't advise, um, if you have a manual, particularly a super technical manual, uh, the manual's already obsolete almost when you print it. Um, and so I, I wouldn't burden little free libraries with technical manuals or a lot of um, highly technical stuff. Also, currently the way computer programming is taught is largely based on line with these online classes. But for novels and um, nonfiction books as well, um, I, I think that, that those can be uh, perfectly fine to share. Now, where is your little free library? Well, you have a map. Here we have the little free libraries uh, in Chicago, Illinois. And um, you, can, you can find um, the little free libraries um, here and expand it and look around and you can see that there's quite a few in Chicago. There, there really are uh, quite a few. And maybe just for grins, I might try to find, you know, in, in here when you click on them, uh, you get 
here's Loris's lending library. Um, but these, um, it's a nice way to get rid of books that are in perfectly readable condition that you don't need any longer, or maybe to pick up a nice book. Uh, and sometimes I've seen little free libraries where there's a large one up high, and then there's another one a little bit lower for, so it's an adult little free library and a child, a juvenile little free library. Just for grants, I'm gonna see if there's anything in Algonquin, Illinois. Yeah, there is. I'll see. I'll find one right on Webster, about a block from me. I've already put books in there. Yeah, 501 West Webster. And that's about a block from me where I live. Try Huntley, Illinois, H-U-N-T-L-E-Y. Oh. First, I want to try uh, Hammond, Indiana. Okay. Oh, Bob, where do you live? Or, well, well, Bob, wh what's a nearby city to where you live? Um, well, Hammond, uh, Munster, uh, Hunt, Munster Highland, Griffith, those are all neighboring towns. So uh, Munster, Indiana, we see um, here. Uh, we have a little free library at the Southside Christian Church. And we have a, a Alliance Club little free library. And uh, we have Jill's Bookhouse little free library. Um, so who, who maintains so these, these things? The, build, the little structures? Whoever built the structure and registered, um, I guess they just choose to, to do that themselves. I have walked up to little free libraries and cleaned stuff out. If I see like there's a bunch of like pamphlets or um, uh, uh, I, I have organized little free libraries because unfortunately people have made them, um, uh, sometimes they're disorganized. Uh, I also believe that some people go into the little free libraries and they resell the books, but at least the books aren't going into the landfill, which is a large part of what this is about, is not throwing uh, things into the landfill if you can reuse them. Now, uh, Tim, what was, the, what was the town in Illinois that you wanted to look at? Huntley, H-U-N-T-L-E-Y. Here we go. Oh, so Huntley has a handful of these and they all seem to be along the same road. Uh, Meadowview Court. Uh, Culver's. Oh yeah. But whoever set up the Little Free Library largely takes stewardship, but I, I tend to try to leave them in good condition when I'm done with them. Like, what do you do? Um, where can I drop off books at? Well, I'll just probably just take them to the Webster Street book exchange. I've got a few that I need to get rid of. Though I've usually just donated them to the Goodwill store near me. You know. <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of good. If you try Crystal Lake, you'll probably find a lot of them. Crystal Lake, Illinois, they're usually pretty, uh, pretty. Kind of uh, the, sad, the, the sad thing, this is a uh, Eagle Stout. This is the Eagle Scout project, but the sad thing about the Little Free Library is that a lot of the Little Free Libraries I know that guy are located in areas where there's already a high literacy. So in there's terms a, of being actual literacy, they're not that great because a lot of them are in areas where by, by and large, the population is largely literate. You just happen to uh, find the, on that Little Free Library page, that's one of the uh, elders at Springbrook Community Church. His, his son just graduated as an Eagle Scout. Yep. Sorry, I didn't think the commentary. <laughs> um, Salon Apprentice. Uh, Salon Apprentice is a way for people who are, um, uh, this is a way to get a free haircut. So what happens is somebody already has a license to cut hair. And then uh, what they do is they join a salon, but they need to go through the salon's uh, if they are in an elite salon, they need to go through the salon's training program. When they go through the salon's training program, then uh, they they have to go. They have to find models who are willing to have their hair. Getting a haircut through a trainee is going to take substantially longer than getting it cut by somebody who's been cutting year hair for twenty five years. 
but um, it is a, um, it, it, this is a, a way to, it, it's, it's a meeting site where if somebody wants a haircut and somebody needs to cut a certain haircut, uh, this was founded in 2006 by a group of apprentices that collaborated to create the system. It's either discounted salon services by apprentices or free services that have advanced training programs. So these people have already cut hair, but they need to go through the salon's advanced training program. Uh, new services are listed daily in various cities, including Chicago. Um, it's free to register. Um, and uh, I, I, I've had my hair cut multiple times. You don't do it if you have an appointment immediately afterwards, but um, you, um, you can see some of the salons, Art and Science, Mario Takoshi, Avita Institute. Um, and what it is, is it's, it's a way for the um, person who's learning about cutting hair to um, prove, to prove to the salon that they know how to do master this haircut. And it's a way for you to get a free haircut, uh, but you will pay in terms of time. Um, so here we have, um, a list here of Salon Apprentice. These were all uh, dated recently. And you'll see that things that tend to be chemical um, color uh, tends to uh, anything with chemical or hair color or um, perms, those they are going to want you to pay in a little bit because the chemicals cost uh, money. Uh, but then here, uh, like the simplest is a bob. It's a one length haircut uh, and that's free. Um, and, and you can probably, be, if you want to only have free work, um, you can filter on this and you can see the salons. Um, oh, oops, um, city. Obviously, we need to filter the city, but um, here, um, but um, anyway, it's not perfect, but anyway, you, you want to filter on the city, but that is a way to get a free haircut um, or a cash-free haircut. You will pay with your time, um, and that's Salon Apprentice. Um, I've gone to some of the finer salons in Chicago and have had free haircuts. Um, we have, Chicago has a very rich uh, museum, uh, uh, embarrassment of riches of museums. We have some of the best museums in the world. And um, there, here I have included this, choosechicago.com often has some interesting um, things like when they have restaurant week, um, they'll list all the restaurants that are available for restaurant week. That's usually near the end of January, early February. That's not a free event, but what it is, is that you can go to some very nice restaurants during a time of low tourist travel, and you can get a, a dinner on a price fixed menu and get a nice sample of, let's say an appetizer, a main meal and a dessert for maybe for $35, $45 for dinner, or maybe $25, $35 for lunch. And that's nice. Um, and, and like I said, this is during a time where Chicago doesn't have a lot of tourists, but here I have a list of free museum days in Chicago, and this is uh, convenient. Um, the Art Institute, um, it's always, you know, this, this lists the museums and the free times. I guess we missed this one. It was June 18th through 25th, um, and this is for Illinois residents. Um, I guess Dusable was free during the month of June. Um, here we have the Field Museum. I can tell you that with the Field Museum on a free day, you can expect a bunch of running, screaming, um, over-stimulated toddlers. Um, that uh, happens, you know, and everybody wants to see the celebrity Sue, who is a male Tyrannosaurus. Um, that was a major fine, but we have uh, upcoming days, July 12th and 15th and August 23rd and 26th of this year, 2021. Um, I guess that some of these you have to read because some of these you have to reserve your tickets online. 
because it really can be too many, especially now in the post COVID age, but it could be too many people. The Field Museum has a wonderful taxonomy exhibit and they also have a wonderful uh, gem exhibit. Um, so I encourage people who wanna go to a museum to, to check this out and, and look up the free days at the museums um, and um, take advantage of that. Um, some of them will uh, mandate um, that you reserve in advance. So be, be sure to read um, that. Um, um, we have wonderful museums in Chicago. Um, the Chicago Public Library offers a lot, an awful lot more than just books. And they have an awful lot of books. Um, at the Chicago Public Library, we have a wonderful collection of films like the film noir films uh, and documentaries, uh, all the Ken Burns series. Um, and we also, um, there's a very large, rich collection of graphic novels uh, that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, also, if you want to go onto this website, chaipublive.org, there's often events and it kind of makes me sad to talk about this because people used to show up for free. Um, and I've seen Camille Paglia. Um, I know Salman Rushdie used to uh, speak at the Chicago Public Library. Uh, Toni Morrison was honored, Audrey Neffneger, um, Jampera Lampe, a Pulitzer Prize uh, winning uh, short story writer. Um, we've had great uh, people talking at the Chicago uh, Public Library back when we had prior to the COVID shutdown. And it was always worth it for me to see what they were offering um, in terms of events. Um, now, I guess a lot of their events now are online, but I like being in person and being able to um, do the Q&A. But there's, there's a lot of resources at the Chicago Public Library. I know that there's a maker's lab that provides access to uh, 3D printers. And we have this online resources here. Um, now, under the online resources, you can um, check out magazines, journals, uh, newspapers, um, including New York Times, Wall Street Journal, um, and I wanted to talk about Flipster because I think that this is really cool. And this is a Flipster digital magazines. And if I click here, oh, excuse me. So let me look through a magazine um, here and uh, we have people in Espanol. Here we have People magazine. And then if I can open this, um, this is a way to look at magazines from your home for free. Uh, it doesn't have all magazines, but it has an uh, interesting selection of magazines here. And I wanted you guys to be aware of this Flipster. Um, and here I am reading People magazine. Um, and this, this Flipster provides a nice platform uh, for um, reading magazines. They offer other magazines as well. Um, not all the magazines that I like, but um, here's Fortune, Sports Illustrated, Business Week. Now, my friend lives in Skokie and my friend brags, brags about the Skokie Public Library brags about it, talks about how wonderful the, the Skokie Public Library is. And she gets through them a subscription to the New York Times and also the New Yorker. Um, they pay a lot for their library, but they have a very good library. Um, and so this is a handy uh, thing to look at too. Um, And they had other, um, I recommend um, looking at that. 
Um, in Chicago, you have access to swimming pools, running tracks, gyms, um, a lot of things through the Chicago Park District. Um, right now, I'm at the Chicago Park District, chicagoparkdistrict.com, uh, parks-facilities. And here I can look up um, certain things to see if they're open. Um, over the shutdown, I wasn't able to use a swimming pool, but let's see what swimming pools are available here. And here we have them. Um, swimming pools, you can't swim for hours on end. After 20 minutes, we're all thrown out of the swimming pool and then we have to line up again to get in again. But these are the, the public swimming pools that are available. Um, around Chicago, and you can narrow down the search, um, I think by your um, zip code, try that here. Okay, uh, I'll research that filters. Okay, so this isn't the most advanced, um, but um, another thing that they have is they have running tracks. Um, Oh, they have skate parks, I guess. Tennis courts, if you like to play tennis. But here, let's look at the running tracks and see what's available. And we have these, you can uh, do your laps on the running tracks and um, be sure to check out the uh, uh, Chicago Park District and see what's available to you. Um, we keep our parks in good shape. We have dog park. So we have swimming pools uh, and we have other programs. I know that there's field houses that have basketball courts, uh, though I don't play basketball. And I know that we have a lot of um, tennis uh, are, courts, so I don't play tennis. What are uh, movies in the park? Do you have any? I'm going to get to that. I will get yeah, to okay. that. Okay, thanks. Yes, this is a Chicago Park District that I'm currently looking at. Oh. Let's go here and let's let's actually uh, if he has all events so we can go here and all events, but I just encourage people to surf the web Chicagoans and see what's available. Uh, and here we do have a list of um, events happening. I, I'm not thrilled with this layout, but um, Um, let me just narrow it down to movies in the park, as Ernie has suggested. So here we are at chicagoparkdistrict.com slash movies. And these are movies in the park. And okay, so here you have um, the high note. Imagine that the Wizard of Oz, everybody's favorite, Doolittle. Oh, proof. she's talking about movies now. Yeah, that movies. you can see. Yes, oh, in the that park. looks good. And you Victory. can uh, bring a bring chairs and bring a blanket. I'm not sure if you can bring a bottle of wine, but you're certainly welcome to bring cans uh, of soda. And um, and and uh, so these are movies in the park. What else do you have? You have night outs in the park. What's that? Um, we have a lot of different things, so I, I think um, dance, toddlers. All right, so that's the chicagoparkdistrict.com. And then here we have um, the, this is the Par Department of Cultural Affairs. Chicago.gov slash city, and then uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs. So um, we have a lot of different things. Now, Chicago has an international film center and we also have a cultural center. And at one point, the international film, uh, the, the international um, film festival, we have a Chicago international film festival and they used to throughout the summer on Wednesdays show movies at the cultural center. That, I'm sure that was shut down after COVID. Okay. But uh, got the, it. The, the Chicago um, International Film Festival would be showing movies um, at the Chicago um, Cultural Center on Wednesday and each 
moving okay, to a different country. Yeah, that's great. Are they going to do that again? Do you know, or you're just well? Sure? What I can do is I can look this up and I can look up the events. So I, if I look up the events here, um, uh, we have different. Um, Films. So we have the Millennium Park Summer Film Fest, and then we have the film festivals and events. Um, summer screening programs. This is Wednesday, May 26th through September 29th. Ah, great. So let's see what's coming up, Ernie. Good idea. Um, the Shiny Shrimps. <laughs> uh, under fire after making homophobic statements on TV, Olympic swimmer Matthias is in hot water, and this is a movie from France. So every so so then on July twenty first we have a movie from South Africa, and on July twenty eighth we have a movie from Mexico, and uh, then we have a movie in um, from Japan, um, and Italy and South Korea, um, Australia, Hungary, every every different. Um, hmm. uh, every, but this is, I, I think this is sponsored by the, yeah, this is the Chicago International Film Festival. And they're, and over the summer, they're showing movies um, at the Cultural Center, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So, uh, yeah. And, oh, this is virtual. <sighs> And, I, and, and you'll see neighborhood organizations like Alliance Francaise or um, certain embassies or um, come in and, and they'll, um, so can you get, and there's a 24 hour watch window. This used to be live. But anyway, this, um, this um, Department of Cultural Events, it, it has a lot of the, the different, um, uh, events happening. Um, I know that you have Millennium Park Summer Film Festival series here, but showing up here, uh, we have The Wiz showing on August 24th, and we have The Dark Knight showing up on August uh, 31st. If you're going to be doing events in Millennium Park, uh, it will be, uh, it will fill up quickly. Um, one time we had Broadway in Chicago, and there was a whole bunch of uh, different songs from different acts in Millennium Park. My friend was in Millennium Park. I literally was not able to get into the entrance. This is not a last minute thing. And this is where you have to fight for real estate. So this, this park that you see in this picture isn't that crowded. I've seen it where almost every square inch is covered by a picnic blanket. So if you're planning on showing up for some popular events such as the opera night, um, Again, this is cultural affairs and special events. Um, if you're planning on doing that, um, you, you uh, better have at least one person there early to sculpt out the, um, the, the real estate, you know, lay down a blanket, put up a couple chairs, because you can see here that it can really fill quickly, especially like when Yo-Yo Ma came into the, um, so here we have the Grand Park Music Festival, Sun Millennium, Summer Park Workouts, um, which I probably should do. The Sonic Pavilion. What's showing at the Sonic Pavilion? Um, oh, sound installations. Okay. Um, but some of these events are going to show up, uh, are going to be very uh, crowded. This looks interesting to me. This is Baroque in the park. And uh, be sure to, to check this out. This also, some of these events sometimes get advertised on WBEZ. Um, sometimes they'll give you a heads up on that. We've, we've been oh. there before too. Millennium parks are free. You have Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, which I probably should be doing in Zumba. And they're on Saturdays and 
I can try to go and see if I can keep up or not. Um, but these are, are in Millennium Park. But you also have something going on in your neighborhood park too. So don't forget about the prior website, the Chicago Park District, because you'll, there's, there's parks throughout Chicago in every neighborhood, uh, wonderful parks. I have two swimming pools within walking distance of me and three large parks within walking distance to me. Chicago's motto is herbs and artists. It's a city and a garden. Um, Open House Chicago. Uh, this is from the Chicago Architecture Foundation, uh, Chicago Architecture Center. Every October, the Chicago Architecture Center is proud to host Open House Chicago, a free two bay public festival that offers behind the scenes access to architecturally, historically and culturally significant sites across the city. Uh, I have been into the Fed. I've been into the Chicago Board of Trade. Um, I've been into um, many of the really important uh, buildings, early high rises that we have in Chicago uh, and um, I, I got been, in the tours. I've been there too. They had, I was a CTA tour I was on one time and they uh, showed us all the stations yes. on the CTA. It's really yes. a good event to go to. I like the elevated CTA tour because you can see the higher parts of building where there's these wonderful designs, but you never look at them from the street. And there's a, the tours in Evanston, they have a sites in Evanston and that includes a very famous um, Baha'i temple. And they also have sites in Oak Park and that also includes Frank Lloyd Wright's very famous Unity uh, temple. And um, uh, some of the most fascinating uh, sites are on the south side. Um, so this is held outdoors. Last year they had wonderful online tours, um, but um, normally what you would do is you would have these people line up and show up at the sites and be able to come in and look at the, the, the building. Uh, and, and so this is openhousechicago.org. And if we go here, this is the actual plan. This year it's gonna be October 16th and 17th of 2021. And what I would do if I were to actually want to do this tour is I would plan ahead of time and, and make sure that I, because you're not going to see all the sites and you're going to want to um, schedule this ahead of time. Now they have an app as well. Um, oh, we want to do, okay. They don't, they haven't listed this year's sites yet, uh, but in the past, it's been a wonderful sites. Um, so check that out for Chicago. The Chicago Architecture Center also does or has had free programs in the past. If you look and they have these programs and you can click on free programs and see what they're offering for free. Now all of these are for 2020 uh, and um, you can see a lot of them were online. Um, I'm guessing because of the shutdown uh, the COVID shutdown, but um, I these it's a nice way to look at architecture um, in Chicago and uh, the docents are trained uh, and they know what they're talking about and um, it's uh, very informative. So this is GoFobo and GoFobo. Uh, this is. Uh, what you'll often see is that they will offer you um, free things in exchange for your information. And sometimes we're used as guinea pigs to go do an early screening and then they'll measure the audience's reaction and they'll ask you to fill out a form to see whether you like the movie or didn't and, and if the movie uh, resonates with the audience or not. Um, and this in order to show up for screenings, you do have to show up early because they will deliberately overbook because they don't want empty seats. They will send you email, um, but uh, if we go here, they have a lot of, it's a marketing company. They have a lot of sweet stakes, but they also have these upcoming screenings. So you can get an early look at some things, um, but this is national and uh, lately there hasn't been a lot showing in Chicago, which is, um, uh, somewhat of a bummer, but um, yeah, this is um, Atlanta. And then if I type in a zip code um, 
in a search in a zip code, I don't think there's going to be anything in Chicago. Um, yeah, there's no local screenings, but in the past they have had local screenings throughout Chicago and you can get an early view of a movie. And sometimes they give out free t-shirts or free food, maybe free popcorn. And what's not to like about that? Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the Saints. This is saintschicago.org. And uh, so the mission of the Saints uh, is to support arts organizations, primarily non for profit in Chicago and nearby communities through volunteer and charitable services. And the most visible thing that the Saints do is they usher for events. Um, now, if you love live theater, dance, or music, uh, including classical music, uh, this you, you have to pay $100 in membership, but if you really take advantage of it, you'll easily use up your $100 pretty quickly. Um, they, um, the, they, part of your membership fee goes to sponsoring um, uh, grants because they give out a lot of their money in grants. Um, and uh, they have an online list of opportunities now. Um, they used to have a newsletter, but uh, they, they do these venues, including the Saints, the, uh, the, including the Steppenwolf, the Looking Glass Theater. Uh, they do the Auditorium Theater and the Harris Theater, and those are the two premier dance venues. Um, they uh, do Music of the Baroque, which is very popular, and I think they go to different venues. Uh, in Skokie, they um, do a lot of things at the North Shore um, Arts Center in Skokie. Um, the Athenaeum Theater sometimes has some very interesting work. This is a Black Ensemble Theater. They recently got a large grant from the ex-wife of Jess Bezos, Mackenzie Scott. Um, the Court Theater does great work. Um, it's not an it's it's 100% auditions, but um, if you were going to want to see um, through dance, I've seen the National Ballet of Cuba do Don Quixote. I've seen the National Ballet Theater. I saw um, the Royal Ballet Theater do um, Amit Khan's um, version of Giselle, and that theater was completely packed. Um, Hello, I've folks. Seen... Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, Joseph. Yeah, we can, Joseph. We're, 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 uh, we're presenting right now, so um, just mute yourself until the presentation's over with, but we are glad you came to join us. Okay. I've seen the Bolshoi Ballet, the Eiffel Ballet, uh, Alvin Ailey, um, Joffrey Ballet. Um, now the Joffrey Ballet is now moved to the Lyric Theater, but they used to be at the Auditorium Theater. Hold on a second. Um, and so I'm mute. it's a hundred. Let me just mute. So they don't hear. Just, just a reminder, if you guys could mute yourselves if you're not on the presentation right now. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Karina. Sorry about that. It's a hundred dollar meetup fee, but it is worth it if you are willing to, um, uh, if you really love theater and you really wanna see a wide variety of theater. Um, I've seen some amazing things. Um, and uh, there's this North Park Village recycling station and sometimes people use it as a dumping ground and I've occasionally found boxes, food, clothing, dishes, a lot of computer junk is put there. If you're somebody who likes to cannibalize a computer or, or save the computer chips or pieces of the computer, people tend to dump computers. They also dump televisions. Sometimes I've seen granite countertops um, and that's there. Um, The Goodman Theater um, also is not part of the Saints. They take volunteer ex ushers, but they kind of, uh, if you're willing, if you really want to see their, um, they, you have to show up an hour and a half ahead of time. You have to wear all black, uh, but, um, but, but you do get to see their shows. Um, and they want you to usher for every show in the year, not, you know, even if you've seen A Christmas Carol a dozen times, you still have to usher for it every year and you can leave that intermission but that's, that's um, after intermission, but that's the deal um, with the Goodman Theater. 
there's other uh, venues that sometimes will, you don't have to join the saints. You can just be a volunteer usher through that venue. Um, but that does require you to probably wear all black and to show up an hour ahead of time. And they like it when people are able to use the scanners. Sometimes they're, they're uh, iPhones, but the scanners to scan people's tickets. Although sometimes you rip tickets. Um, and uh, here, uh, so, so look at the different theater venues. Uh, flu shots are available in the fall. Uh, we have flu shots available. I was able to get mine this year at Truman College. Uh, you don't have to uh, give your insurance out. Um, and I know last year they really wanted everybody to get a flu shot because uh, the hospitals were already overwhelmed. Um, COVID vaccines, don't pay for them, they're free. There's multiple places from walking distance of where I sit where I can get a COVID vaccine, I did. Um, and um, the COVID vaccines are free um, and it, they should be easy to find. And at this point, you should be able to get in and out. Um, if you live in Chicago um, you, and you're interested in free things, I would recommend um, uh, find, knowing who your alderman is and then looking up your alderman's email um, because the alderman will tell you about events going on in the neighborhood and sometimes they'll have these free giveaways as well. Um, Coinbase um, is a platform for borrowing and trading cryptocurrency. They're known for being easy for beginners and they're also known for having very high fees. But um, the, the thing is, is, is that you can earn some free cryptocurrency if you want um, by taking these, these uh, five minute classes, going to a small exam and you'll earn a couple dollars with the free cryptocurrency in different, um, not in Bitcoin or Ethereum, but in some of the other smaller cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is also, um, there's also a, a culture in Chicago, the Freegan and dumpster diving, and I have some um, links for Freegan and dumpster diving. Now, Tim, um, it's been about an hour. Um, I have a second page here, which is dealing with poverty and where you can mutual aid. Let's um, keep going. And so Charlie, that's my, there. My so, if you keep going for a little bit, Charlie. Yeah, let's go through it, Karina. It might be yeah, useful. Go ahead. Yeah, up. please go ahead. We okay. were more interested. Um, the first thing is that there's some people who are very poor and they need food. So the first question I have is where can you find food? So I'm gonna click my control button and click on this link, okay? So um, can somebody give me, um, and this is also in Spanish for people who speak Spanish, Although I, um, and then uh, can somebody give me a zip code? Uh, let's try 60102. That's mine. Okay. It's in the suburban area, but I do know we have a food pantries out here. Um, let me try, let me try this Algonquin, Illinois. Okay. Um, Let's try, there's some, try Franklin Park. Called feeding, there, there's a national organization. The national organization is called Feeding America. Uh, around Chicago, you have the Chicago Greater Food Depository. And that is where uh, this is a large, massive distribution warehouse uh, center where goods are kept on large pallets, cases of food, are, are stored on, are stacked on large pallets. This is a massive large warehouse. And uh, this Chicago Greater Food Depository tends to uh, provide uh, food for the food pantries. Um, let me go to, Charlie, what is your um, zip code? If you wanna give it out. 60616. Oops. So the Greater Chicago Food Depository 
um, is, like I said, this is part of Feeding America, which is a national network of uh, distribution of warehouse distribution centers of warehouses. So Feeding America is uh, a national distribution center, uh, is a national net network of warehouses. And then these were the warehouse in Chicago is the Chicago, uh, Greater Chicago Food Depository. Um, and the Greater Chicago Food Depository is this massive warehouse where cases of, of uh, food are stacked on pallets. And then this Greater Chicago Food Depository provides food to the individual food pantries, um, which were very active during the shutdown. Um, and here we see near um, in, in the back of the yards neighborhood, we have um, some food pantries here. And this is, this is how you can find your nearest food pantry if you live in Chicago. Um, I don't know if there's some, if there's maybe a different um, area for the northern suburbs, Tim, and maybe that's why Algonquin, but th these are the food pantries and they have different okay. times okay. and different dates. Um, but as having been a volunteer at a food pantry, um, I strongly encourage you not to show up as a food pantry is closing down and then saying, here I am, I'd li like some food. Um, but um, if you can find a food pantry near you, this is at 2907 South Wabash. And if you can find um, um, a food pantry um, near you, then you can click on more information. And this is from Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. on the second week of um, the month. Okay, so I guess this is just a monthly um, food pantry. I know these food pantries, there's a soup kitchen here. Um, here we at 50 East 41st Street. Okay, this is, so this is a resource for people who um, need food pantries. Um, some of the food pantries also during the COVID lockdown use a federal program, it was called Farmers to Family Food Boxes. And um, that, uh, the, I like them because they provided a minimum amount of food that, that people can get. So they, in Chicago, there were, it was a gallon of milk, um, a, uh, a pint of uh, yogurt, um, a cottage cheese, sour cream, lots of vegetables, fruits, and some meats uh, like chicken. Okay, so uh, the love fridge. Um, Tim, you're gonna tell me when to stop, but here I'm gonna click on control and I'm gonna click on the love fridge. We have love fridges throughout Chicago. Um, this is a love fridge. Um, Irina, this has been really good. Keep going, please. All right. Um, the, the love fridge, what is the love fridge about? So the love fridge are refrigerators that um, have a sponsor and they're all throughout Chicago. It's a Chicago based initiative created to nourish our communities through mutual aid by offering solutions to food scarcity and food waste. Uh, powered by kindness, generosity and love. We firmly believe that feeding oneself is not a privilege, but a right. With food insecurity at an all time high keeping our communities fed is now more important than others. And people will walk up to the love fridge and they'll put in food. Um, and then other people will walk to the love fridge and they'll take out food. Um, and if I go to the love fridge, uh, the lovefridge.com and then I say, find a fridge. Okay, and here I have a map showing me the different areas of the love fridge. Um, Uh, this is uh, Belly of the Block Community Pantry. Uh, it's accessible 24-7. But uh, these, these are the love fridges. Um, what's this one here? This is uh, on 2023 South Prairie Avenue. And some of them are open 24-7. Some of them are limited access. And you want to be sure that you don't um, come here and, and, but this is 44 South King Drive. What do we have up north? Uh, we have these different love fridges and we have volunteers who will come over. Honey Love, that's right near a uh, honey butter uh, fried 
Chicken, which is a great restaurant. I've enjoyed it, Mike, because I well, I've enjoyed it many times. But they have a love fridge. Uh, this is the actual refrigerator, and then you have the pantry um, nearby. And the fridges are as good as the volunteers who sustain them. Um, and so sometimes, you know, and this is, but uh, this is another resource for people who uh, need food. Um, and that's a love fridge and it's part of mutual aid. Um, there's a map of the love fridge, but um, Take what you need, leave what you can. And these are in the love fridges also um, sometimes have very artistic um, uh, front ends to them. And um, again, they're as good as the people who stock them. And so, and sometimes people dump garbage into them, which is disappointing, but you know, you're not supposed to have expired food or um, crap that nobody wants. Um, but um, Sometimes there's some great here. You can see this one is very well stocked. And so, and uh, it's a mutual aid group. So I have to lecture you now. Mutual aid is not a form of charity, but a guiding principle for practicing reciprocal and collective care. Mutual aid networks provide a way to meet the basic needs of the community while allowing each other to contribute what we can to the common good. But simply we look out for one another in any way that we are able to. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so that's a resource for people who need goods. Um, okay, that's a good, that's a good site, but let's keep keep going. Um, Drake Garden Food Pantry is a food pantry. Um, it, it's um, here I have and then Olive Garden's food pantry too. These don't have refrigerators but um, there's a movement called the Little Free Food Pantry where people can drop off. This is similar. This kind of came out of the Little Free Book movement. This is the Little Free Food Pantry mu movement. Uh, so just like there's these mini, uh, as you saw, boxes that hold food. Well, some people turn their their light their little libraries into little food pantries, um, and you can look up. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see if there's one near you, Tim. Six zero one. Six zero one zero two. I don't know if I'm going to find anything or not, but well, it's it you know it it is amazing. Oh, there there is one here. It's Mapleton Community Cabinet. So uh, this is on uh, Pulsifier Road. Lisa. Oh, it's in Mapleton, Maine. What the heck? Six oh one oh two. Maybe a different. Turn... Let me try something else. Karina, this is actually quite quite neat. I didn't even know that there was a little library box near me. I might just go there tonight and put some of my old books in there. I got some good stuff too. <laughs> Ed, put in 60618. Uh, I got a little, uh, okay, so there's one in Mooresville, Indiana. Uh, this isn't really a let me try another one. Um, let's do 60647 um, and let's look at that. Oh, this is not, I'm gonna try Chicago, Illinois. I, I walk by food pantries. So I know that there's food pantries here. I don't know if they've registered officially. So here we have the Drake Garden Food Pantry, the People's Church of Chicago. Hey, Charlie, there's a South Union free pantry. Are you gonna donate to that? Uh, it is uh, in... Um, South Union Avenue, right near where Charlie lives. Huh. 
Uh, we have a Wicker Park uh, food pantry, but these are, okay, so here you have uh, 1500 North Point. And it's, again, this is a food pantry. Not There's a lot more food pantries in this, but some people chose to register theirs with the little free um, uh, food pantry movement. Where's the, oh, why would you put, there's obviously their search engine uh, leaves something to be desired, um, but. Um, but you can find them if you look. Yes. <laughs> I had a friend in Skokie for a while who was using a food pantry for about six weeks when he was out of work. And now he's donated it to a cash extensively when he got a job again. He was really happy to have them for a while because he was uh, running low, you know. <laughs> so I guess in Evanston, there's this Trinity Lutheran Church on Gulf Road mm -hmm. and uh, they have a food pantry here. So, a lot of, lot of places like that. Um, lasagna keep... Love. This is not an organization that I'm involved in, but this is something I read about. Um, and Lasagna Love are people who make lasagnas for people who need food. Um, Let's get down to the uh, Facebook stuff. That, all that's neat. Okay, yeah, these with, we feed families, spread kindness and strength in our community. Um, There's also a lot of links on national pub on the, the WBEZ website that pay, that's done interviews with the, a lot of these organizations. Yes. Um, about what is lasagna love this is not something i'm involved in but let's see lasagna love is a nationwide graph move movement that aims to positively by connecting neighbors with neighbors through homemade meal delivery we also seek to eliminate stigmas associated with asking for help especially from moms um when it's needed most uh, lasagna love yeah it was started at the beginning of the pandemic uh uh, was looking up ways to help moms in her community. She, they started making and delivering meals to families. Um, there was an extensive interview on this organization on uh, WBEC and they said that uh, the main gist of it was people were making pasta and uh, just giving it off at people who were shut in from COVID or, or having trouble with it. You know, we've, uh, what is this night ministry healthcare bus? Okay, this is for healthcare. Um, I was living in Uptown a while ago and I know that, um, now I think the people here have training to be a um, CNA. Um, they, I think they were kicked out of Uptown when they changed the alderman. Um, but um, they, um, uh, um, um, they, they, okay, uh, this is a specially designed health outreach buffs, fully equipped nurse's office, bringing basic medical care and a sense of community to individuals and families. What, what they are is, uh, it's a faith-based organization and they, they provide health care to people who um, need it. Um, uh, homeless people. Um, Charles had scheduled a wonderful talk um, about people who were a photojournalist who went through the tent cities uh, where there were uh, a high rate of drug addictions, the, the drug addicts living in Rescoville and the tent cities. And the, the, these were photojournalists who looked at his, his tent cities. And um, it, so here we have, I guess, the, the bus schedule and location. Um, I am not affiliated with this group, but I have seen them when I was living in Uptown. And I think they, like I said, I think the new alderman, when they got, when Schiller was, uh, had retired and the new alderman was Kappelman, I think he, um, he, uh, told them not to be in Uptown anymore, but 
um, this is a, a website for resources for people who, uh, and I, I believe it's supposed to be very non-judgmental. Survival supplies, food, hygiene kits, warm winter wear, condoms, coffee, uh, hospitality, case management, housing, social service, outreach, and healthcare. Um, and yeah, so here you have a, the bus in the background. Now, I, I myself am not a healthcare provider, so, but uh, our street medicine brings healthcare, survival supplies. They visit encampments, expressway viaducts, street corners, nurse practitioner, case medicine, uh, street medicine outreach professional, which I believe means CNA, but anyway. So that's an organization uh, that you can look up. Um, and uh, Food Not Bombs, this is a Facebook group. Um, some of them have a political orientation. Um, um, all volunteer, do it yourself, committed to saving food that would have otherwise been wasted and serving it for free in public spaces. Uh, you're gonna have to dig in to see what's going on here. Um, I guess there are no upcoming events. Um, I don't know if they're selective or not. Um, but um, yeah, um, Maybe if you join the group, you'll have more information than I do. Um, we also, in Facebook, we have mutual aid organizations, and this is kind of neat. Um, I had showed you before two types. One was called a free box, and they, the other was buy nothing. Uh, but you can also, you can go into Facebook, and you can search for mutual aid. And I know uh, there's a couple of them. These are uh, the mutual aid organizations. And I think it's it's not so much landfill diversion as it is, um, I guess, uh, uh, helping your neighbor. Um, but uh, go into Free Cycle and then do a search over here, Mutual Aid Chicago, and you can then um, find mutual aid organizations. Uh, you see that the Luffridge is, is listed over here. Um, care mongering, I've never heard that word before. Uh, here we have U Chicago, Albany Park, Mutual Aid Network, Portage Park. Let's see all of them. Um, DuPage, there's a mutual aid for DuPage, Rogers Park, Avondale. So um, if you, I would, if I was impoverished, I would. If I were to be impoverished, then I would go out and check out the mutual aid organization, see if there isn't a mutual aid group from my area. This is um, the People's Music School. And this is if for people who are parents with children and they want their children to have a musical education. Um, this, this, this is a, a The mission is to deliver access to the benefits of a high quality tuition free music education through intensive instruction and performance our students achieve excellence in music that transfers to other areas in life. Um, and these are students, and I don't know how this group is doing now that we've had the lockdown, um, but if you have a musical instrument that you're not using. You can donate them to uh, the People's Music School, and I think they'll give them to a child who's learning how to, to teach music, and they emphasize, we're not just teaching music, I'm also teaching you to, um, but uh, this, I, I believe these are music, musician, these are mus professional musicians or professional educators who are teaching kids how to play. Uh, what's going on here? Are there any upcoming events? No, there's not. 
but you can see here, this looks like he's an instructor, uh, maestro, and here you see young whippersnappers. Um, this is located in Uptown and yeah. They've been profiled in the reader. Um, Global Gardens is near me and Global Gardens is a refugee um, garden uh, and it's right near the Peterson Garden Project where I like to garden, um, but uh, there may be refugee gardens for, <coughs> or with Peterson Garden Project, I know that we have some uh, scholarship plots, uh, but um, it's a very active garden. Uh, we have to share our water, they have to share water with the Peterson Garden Project, but they, they, they come out with a lot of, um, um, goods and um, this is an interesting organization. Uh, Peterson Garden Project, I think, uh, that I don't know if they have any, um, if you're poor uh, and you want to have a plot for a year. See, I rent my plot out for $85. But um, but uh, they do have some some scholarship um, plots as well. Um, um, and so these are but each person pays eighty five dollars and they get a plot um, and. Um, they also have plots where we grow our produce and we give it out to people. But this is, uh, these are pop-up gardens and each person gets their own plot or their own bed uh, that they're allowed to grow what they want, um, but it's food. Uh, they grow food and um, uh, this is a fine organization. Uh, they have scholarship and in-garden uh, program partnerships. Um, they set aside at least 10% of their garden plots for scholarships for individual family and food growing programs facilitated with uh, community partners. Uh, for me, I, uh, I pay a $85 membership and I get a garden bed that's four feet by eight feet. And um, these are the various locations, um, but they really start in the spring. So if a, a person wants or needs a scholarship plot, they should contact them early. We're in the middle of um, July now, so, but uh, they're very proud of the, the food that they give away to various food pantries, fresh food. And- um, Where is this located, it. Karina, where you do this? All right, so if we look up Peterson, uh, garden project. Um, oh. Go to petersongarden.org. I don't think I have this listed on the list. And then uh, what they do, they have a, um, a listing of the 2021 garden locations. There's Lawrence oh. and Sacramento, Broadway and Sunnyside, Howard and Ashland, Lincoln and Sacramento, Carmen and California, and Broadway and Rosemont. Oh. Um, Broadway and Rosemont is, yeah. Um, but you'd have to contact them in the spring. I would recommend early spring if you were interested in growing. But the Global Garden uh, is uh, next to this refugee garden that I have listed. Uh, it's a garden in, in the refugee gardeners, they, they do serious, they, they have a, a great yield. Um, and so this is the Peterson Garden project. Uh, it's not free. Peterson Garden is $85 a year unless you're, you get a scholarship plot. Um, I guess this is my last link is this Dress for Success. Uh, and this is um, uh, helping people um, get good professional work clothes. That's good. And, um, but also with the gardening, see if you don't have some local, um, I would see if you don't have local 
um, gardens also. Peterson Garden Project, which has our pop-up gardens in different places. We don't own the land. Uh, we're there by the uh, benefit, you know, by, by the um, blessings of the actual landowner. Uh, and then if the landowner wants their land back or wants to sell it, uh, then we move. Uh, but beyond Peterson Garden Project, I believe that there are other neighborhood gardens um, and I would recommend contacting, you know, if, if maybe your alderman might know, because your alderman is, is a resource. Your alderman has the various um, uh, resources and, and these, for example, Drake Garden has a Drake Garden food pantries in Drake Garden. And I know that they're building a pollinator garden, not a food garden, but here uh, to find your alderman which could be a useful site. Um, okay, um, Ward or Alderman um, oh, Ebo, anyway. Um, yeah, you can, um, here's Daniel Laspada, and I'm sure Daniel Laspada has a newsletter um, yeah, so. That's my talk. All right, very good. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share your screen so we can see everybody. Um, and I can do that, okay. We appreciate your thing, Karina. I, I uh, <laughs> have been on some of these mice, been aware of some of these myself. Um, but one thing I will say is that uh, how often do you use these free sites, Karina, and what got you interested in this stuff? Uh, free cycle I use at least once a month. Uh, next door, um, I also like to check out. Um, and sometimes people want something and I find that I have that thing sitting on my shelf and I'm happy to uh, give it away to somebody. Um, so uh, um, uh, the the free the the beginning not the 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 free cycle and the free box and um, the Facebook sites maybe you know a couple times a month. Ah, well you know that that that's great. Now say I wanted to get a laptop and I have like three computers that are Linux compatible on them. How would I? But how which? Would you recommend I use for those getting rid of the Linux computers and trying to find a laptop? Okay, you're you're doing two separate things. You're okay. offering things and you're you're asking for things. Right. Uh, I would either use FreeCycle or Nextdoor to offer your Linux laptops that you no longer use. But what I would first do is remove the hard drive from your laptop. Uh, not, they do not give them your hard drive. I have your personal information on it. I have private information on your laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I would remove. I would remove your hard drive, and then uh, people do like to take computers, cannibalize computers, and I would either use FreeCycle or I would use the Nextdoor app. And I actually think they they shouldn't be that hard to go. Okay. If you can't do that, you can also, there's um, some organizations that will take your donated computer. Um, oh, the, uh, what, what is the, um, um, free computer, um, oh, free geek, free geek, um, free geek. If nobody wants it, then I would get in contact with free geek Chicago. Really? Uh, free. Yes, Free Geek Chicago. I can put their uh, link in your. If 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 you don't, if it doesn't work to use Nextdoor or FreeCycle, then I would go here and hmm. see if they would be interested. Ah, FreeGeekChicago.org, huh? Yes. Oh, okay. What's well, so this? The one that? Uh, wow. I know this looks pretty decent. Yeah. Low cost refer. Oh, cool. Purchase hard drive destruction. <laughs> wow. Again, don't don't give people I have, I have information. No, no, no. This is this is a. Uh... Irina, I have question. 
if I may. Um, so can, first of all, uh, kindly, can you repeat, it's called 3G or 3B, Chicago.org. Can you repeat kindly? Uh, it's in the it's in the free geek chicago.org okay G, it's like david it, it's in the chat open up the chat i put a open link up the up. chat there's a link in there lana no but what the, i'm i'm sorry because maybe it's that connection and i put on speaker big sticker maybe it's not uh proper connection can you say middle letter free what b or free what G is yep. in garage, E as in egg, ah, E as in egg, K as in... No, 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 uh, no, I understand, I understand. But, but middle letter, like Raj, three... G, yes, G as in garage or giraffe. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Um, and... Uh, but this... I have the link in the chat, too. Oh, okay, okay. And my the second question, if I may... Um, mm, 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 mm. fine, I will ask in you a little bit later. Thank you so much for the presentation. Oh, you're welcome. All right, Karina, do you know if they still have that museum pass offered at the public library? Charlie, they do, but it's for children uh, and not children at heart. Uh, the, the, the museum pass is available at the library if, but uh, there's uh, that, Fine question, Charlie, uh, but they've changed it because there were too many um, big people uh, like me. Um, and so the answer is yes, but there's restrictions now. Um, oh, uh, that, that's a good question. They, they do, but they, they have the, um, the museum pass is for children uh, and I can try to find the restrictions here, but. Um, that's all right. That's good. Yeah, I know what it was. They had a pass and it was good for one week at various museums. They were difficult to get some of the more popular museums. Yeah. And they it, used to also have tickets to Ravinia too. Yeah. But if you went to the library right. all the time, like I did once a week, they even had a bulletin board where you could look on what museum, and if you lucked out, they'd have the Field Museum or something like that. Uh, but well, no. what, yeah, they had the Shedd Aquarium, Brookfield Zoo, Museum of Science and Industry, Chicago's Children's Museum. They have 17 passes, actually. This is an excellent Museum of Natural History, uh, Art Institute, Botanic Gardens, Peggy Na Nopart Nature Museum. Oh, no. Uh, Chicago, Lincoln Park Zoo and History Museum. They have 17 uh, passes, but I want to find the restrictions on them. Um, so there's 17 of them. If you go to shypublive.org and you search on museum pass, uh, but... Um, was Ravinia in that list? I don't believe it was. Um, okay. That's too bad. And... Oh, yeah, um, look at that again. The other thing you mentioned was, at least in the downtown library, has an excellent video collection. Now it's been years since I've been there, but I work the block away, so I go once a week and you could get six videos regular movies I got generally got the documentaries uh, and this is no guide I saw virtually all of them over time even the library well I knew them I volunteered there but yes once a week I go there I check out the museum pass and get up six videos uh, I always got the same number because when I, this is the trick, if you, when you're returning them, if you borrow the same number all the time, you know how many you need to return. Mm, good idea. I saw the entire Ken Burns series on national parks uh, and I got that through the public library. 
Um, I it's they like I said they have this wonderful collection of film noir um, and and uh, uh, yeah it's it's really great. Again, my friend raved about Skokie's library. Now about the museum pass. Uh, here's from the website. I put it in chat. If you are a C Chicago Public Library card holder in an adult resident of Chicago, you may check out a kid museum pass at any CPL location. Each CPL location has a limited number of kids museum passports for each museum. Unless otherwise noted, a group must include at least 10, uh, one child under the age of 18 for the kids museum passport to be valid and a maximum of two adults are admitted with each pass. So you need two adults and at least one child, but but this program still is available and it's, it's really, um, um, I don't know if Ravinia is there, but uh, yeah, there's 17 museums. Um, yeah. Karina, I'm sorry, I have another two questions, very quick, very brief. Um, if you can kindly tell me again, it's, uh, it's called freecycle.com or freecycle.org. Um, I actually have a whole cheat sheet with all the links that you need. Uh, can you open up your, um, can you open up the chat in the group and I can give you the document and you can download it. It has all the links that you need. Ah, uh, okay. You mean, um, should I open chat which in the screen right now? Here in the college? Lana, there's a function in your Zoom called chat. On the bottom of your screen, just click on right, it. Right, right, right. I saw. And it's all information over there? Yes. Okay. Charlie's because also going to post a document on the college website. Okay. Um, but I have all the links. I have the links. This is a cheat sheet. It has all the links that you may need. Yes. And, and one more very, very quick. Um, it was like very quick. It was page about health health, uh, whatever it's called, health program or health page. Can you kindly tell me what should I look? Also in the chat or um, or different uh, sites? That's also on the sheet too, the health bus they're talking about. That's yeah, also yeah. on the sheet too. The, the if you wanna just, um, yes, that, that is the um, Knight Ministries has a health bus. But also I would look up the, the city of Chicago and the Cook County Department of Health. Now you can get free, uh, you can get free um, uh, 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 flu shots in the fall and you can definitely right now get free COVID vaccines um, and get free COVID tests as no, well. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't need it. <laughs> so and, listen, uh, can, you, can you tell me again very slowly, uh, you mentioned how it's Cook County? Can you say it again? Okay, just a second. Um, there's a little bit of other information. Um, oh, they don't, I was looking up Ravinia and I couldn't quite. Um, but you know what, actually, I'm interested, you know, this page about health. Uh, um, how you say, health static you mentioned, and it was very quick in the screen. I, I would like to know exactly. I like it, this page about health information. You know, it's it was made, you know, several departments and uh, um, several offices, whatever it's called. <laughs> just health page, what, if you can kindly tell me. Um, yeah, just a second. Sure. Um, this is an area that I don't know if we should get into. Getting health care in Chicago is a yeah. totally different subject matter. Yeah. Um, and Cook County and things of that make the public health. Chicago public health? Chicago public health? Just a second. Sure, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> I think they partner with other. Um... No, this page what you saw during your speech, if you will. Well, well, could you download the 
Charlie, why don't you email Lana? Do you have Lana's uh, email address? You can. Yeah, I'll send her the list. Huh? I will send you the list. It's oh, thank you. Question. Thank you so much, Charlie. Okay, Back thank you. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. And You're again, welcome. thank you so much for your presentation. Also, uh, you. I, yeah, I would also look up the city has an extensive website. So does Cook County. But the way Cook County works is a lot of things are for Cook County, and then the city of Chicago does its own thing. Wait, wait, can, can you can you kindly repeat what did you say? Um, there is a, a city of Chicago doc. There, there is a, a there is a Chicago Department of Public Health that you can look oh, okay, up. Okay. Google. Chi Chicago, how it's called? Chicago. Public I would look up Chicago Department of Public Health. Ah, department. Of public health. Public health, yes. Okay. I would okay. Google it. I think you can. It will come up in your search. On Google, right? On Google. Yeah, on Google. On I Google. Have, okay. I have a question, as soon as uh, you're done, um, uh, concerning medical care, uh, one of uh, my coworkers <laughs> many many years ago uh, told me that he needed dental work. A friend of his was becoming a dentist. I think at Northwestern University, and his friend told him uh, to come to him when he was being evaluated for dentistry and said, I will do dental work for you for free. So he went there and he got free dental work uh, and his friend uh, eventually became a dentist. Uh, I, my question after your presentation tonight is, if you go to uh, uh, a dental school and get a potential dentist to uh, to do his testing on you. He does his, your dental work for you for free. Is there such a thing as can you uh, sue them for malpractice if they hurt you or if they uh, do malpractice or does that involved in uh, the free stuff? Um, I actually got free dental care. Uh, I was on. Um nextdoor.com and there was a woman who was training to be a hygienist. She was training to be a hygienist at Fox College, uh, which is actually in Cicero. Uh, it was pretty far southwest for me. Uh, I did think I had to sign a waiver and I can't imagine that you would go through a program and not sign a waiver. Um, but uh, I know that they, uh, she needed people to work on uh, and she was just about to graduate and, and she did dental care. It took a long time, just like the haircuts take a long time. Uh, but I think Fox College will give $20 appointments uh, to people who need dental care. And I got a full set of x-rays uh, and uh, the people who are learning how to get a skill really are very uh, involved. Um, but I can't imagine, um, I cannot imagine um, uh, not having a waiver or, you know, putting yourself under that liability. Um, so you would be, you would then, uh, before you're getting the dental care for yeah, free, you put yourself on a waiver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I myself want to do that without having a waiver or an agreement. Um, I mean, if you're going to get it cheap like that, that doesn't mean they, that means they're not going to have no practice insurance. I mean, of course, you'd be signing a waiver when you do something like that. You know, now, I did. I just recently looked up and there are, I guess there are some sites um, from what I see um, who, who do offer. Um, um, I found this website in here. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat. But I was, I was at um, Oak College uh, in Cicero and they had a very professional setup and people were training how to be a dentist and they gave me my full x-rays and um, she gave me free toothpaste and a toothbrush and a, a floss and I even got fluoride treatment and... But do you see the link I have? Uh, I am guarantee that, but that's what I found anyway um, on the web. I'm um, not going anywhere. I'll be back in about a minute. Nature's calling. Okay. The next question, anyone? 
Yeah, uh, Miss Kaushish, uh, this is a wonderful presentation, wealth of information. Thank you. Uh, when I look at your list, um, I see most of the resources uh, in Chicago, Cook County. Um, can you uh, tell me some similar resources in DuPage or uh, DuPage County based? Well, that's really interesting. Um, so if I go to the, there's a website called Feeding America. Um, and Feeding America is the overarching organization for all these district warehouses. Um, and then if I go to Feeding America, and then let me try to see if there isn't something for DuPage uh, here. Um, Already unemployment. Um, I've been living in Chicago, um, and um, like if I say, um, what is your? Could you name a zip code in DuPage County? Or um, if I do a. Wait, if I find a food bank, so if I go to feedingamerica.org and then I'm gonna to go to find a food bank and then um, can you give me possibly one zip code in DuPage County? So I'm gonna put this, sure. are you on the chat? I'm gonna- uh, Sure, go. it's uh, Elmo 60126. All right, so if I go to 60126, That's strange. Some of these search engines really aren't working and I keep getting things out of um, state. Um, let me try Illinois instead. But Feeding America is a national organization um, if I do Illinois. Okay, um, there's a Greater Chicago Food, there's something in Geneva, Illinois uh, there's something in Springfield, Illinois. There's something in Urbana, Illinois. There's something in Evanston, Indiana, and one in New Jersey. But let me look at, there's, is, is DuPage in central Illinois? It's on the west side. And sometimes food pantries are operated by the townships. My sister, in fact, operated one. So sometimes there's municipalities operate them. You have to check, like you were saying, check the alderman, check with your township, uh, and they may, or they may be able to guide you, or a senior, senior centers, uh, senior organizations are good sources of information regarding that where you live. Uh, times, just a quick Google search with your zip code will also uh, yield a lot of good results. Let me see. Okay, thank you. Uh, feedingamerica.org. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that not there. There is um. Joseph, where I are you think from? A couple of food pantries here, uh, like I, I'm in Illinois, Wheaton, Illinois, Wheat in Illinois, Villa Park, Illinois. Um. Here I'm there. seeing. I'm sure if you check with a local church, they should be able to tell you. Yeah, because they have a DuPage County Food Pantry. And uh, I'm looking right now. I'm going to add a new link uh, on the... Um, um, there, there was a, a link. Um, so um, could you name a particular town um, in DuPage? Uh, Elmhurst. Elmhurst, okay. There's plenty out there. <laughs> you got, you got plenty of resources out there. Melrose Park, all that stuff. 
Yeah. Maywood, I know, has got a number of them that run too. They distribute out of churches. There is a Facebook page. There's a um, uh, there there's a Elmhurst Yorkfield food pantry. Um, I think if you also check with neighborhood associations, uh, like in my neighborhood, they have something called the Bridgeport Alliance, and those people are experts on that and will guide you direct. They operate one themselves for clothing and they'll direct you to the sources for that. So find out if there's a community group uh, operating in your na neighborhood or town. Yeah, I see a few resources, thank you. There's a Elmhurst Yorkfield food pantry, it's eyfp.org and I put that in the chat. Uh, they have hours and locations or hours and locations. Um, You'll be able to find something. I mean, there's a, a lot of these things. Like I said, my friend Pete is not who used the uh, food pantry up in Skokie for a while. He just did a quick Google search and found one within myth, myth in minutes. It's amazing what the web has. And it, it looks like Elmhurst is using the farmer to family food boxes. Uh, like I, I like those food boxes and it really was a boondoggle to the farmers. It was from the Department of Agriculture under Sony Purdue. But what they did is, is, is it gave people a minimum amount of, um, of, of, yeah. So I would, I would check out the, um, I, I sent a link. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a related question. Uh, it seems uh, you are involved uh, with this for a while. Uh, are these resources or requirements demand on the rice or pretty much the same or going down? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Uh, are the need for these kind of services in the rice over the past several years? Going up or going down? Yeah. Um, I, in COVID, uh, we had what happened is there was a group that I volunteered with called Care for Real, and they set up a pop up food pantry, but they got this response that was so overwhelming that it's not a pop up food pantry, it's a permanent food pantry, because they just got a really big response. Um, and a and lot of them have been used, a lot of them have had record, uh, at least out in McHenry County, a lot of them have had a record number of responses during the COVID crisis, you know. And a lot of a lot of outpouring has gone in. Like I said, our, our Springbrook Community Church recently had a food truck come in. They you know they require a a certain fee to get the, you know the, the truck out there, and then a certain amount of uh, volunteers and equipment before they would do one out there. But they have a lot of this stuff everywhere, and it's just a matter of asking. If you have a local church or faith based organization, they're probably your best resource. You know, there's there's no need to. I mean. I know a guy who's homeless in your area and he's been able to find free shelter for the last two years. <laughs> so, you know, and it, 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 there, there's a lot out there. And I mean, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, just nobody has to be homeless or hungry in, in America, but they also, um, uh, you know, you know I, I knew a lady who, uh, had two dogs and she wasn't willing to get rid of the dogs, but she was still able with the pads thing to get meals and uh, stay inside overnight there a few times. That's and there's actually food pantries for animals. There's people who give away uh, pet food. There's pet food pantries. That's part of Care for Real, I think has a animal food pantry. I don't want to get into rebuttals, but the best source of information on these is a poor person. I learned that from people in my neighborhood. What's a, a poor culture? person? Anyone who's poor. And there's an underground network of information. This is shared. I learned this tutoring to poor students in my neighborhood. They they share this information among each other. There's even things like getting free bus passes whatnot, and utility bills, uh, even automobile insurance. But 
poor people uh, have learned survival skills and they share this information among each other. What's the site so, called, Charlie? You just talk to someone who is poor. Oh. It's not a website. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay. The people talk to my, believe you, even my friend who is not well is poor showed me some tricks on getting food, uh, which I wasn't aware of right in the store that I shop. Uh, but now there, there, there is an underground society of dumpster divers, and they yes. know when the when the stores close and and what the stores throw out, um, and uh, they know how to dumpster dive and get the right food. Um, and I, I'm serious, and a lot of times um, stores throw away food that actually is is really good food. Oh. Um, we had a guy. Karina, who came to the college occasionally, still does. And he was in the Chicago Greens. And he would show up the meetings with all kinds of food that they had secured. And we'd have like a potluck dinner. Uh, these people know that. And I know that with bagels, like there used to be a lot of bagel shops around. And at the end of the day, all those bagels, they got rid of all their bagels. All the bagels were made fresh every day. So um, I used to be in bicycle clubs and we used to be able to pick up the bagels uh, that they were gonna throw away anyway. Uh, so, um, but there's other people who are more expert in dumpster diving or freaking uh, movements. And I know that there's videos on um, YouTube as well. Um, where I live, there's a lot of people who are scavengers for metal, um, but, but <laughs> anyway, it's off topic, but. Um, but but if you know, like you're near a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's and you know the cycle or when they throw things out, Whole Foods is so expensive that anything that isn't perfect gets thrown out. So you have a apple with a tiny blemish, you throw it out. I mean, and, and it's perfectly edible. Um, <coughs> a, a relative of mine used to go dumpster diving and then sell what he found on eBay <laughs> did pretty well. Yeah, um, Karina, all these uh, free groups that um, you can join, do they um, require that you, or, you know, they re do they require that you take an oath or certify that you're not going to just resell the items you get for free? They do not because the point is to find, to avoid the dumpster, to avoid the landfill. So uh, if you had offered up a book and I took your book and I sold it on Amazon and somebody purchased it for me, the book did not go into the landfill. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it still okay. didn't go into the landfill. Uh, so you had a bike and you said, I haven't used this bike for years and I bought the bike and I sold the bike. Again, that bike didn't end up in a trash heap and didn't go into the dumpster. So it's still the, the mission to, to do landfill diversion. I'm sure that there's people, uh, there's one free box and I'm almost sure that there's people who go into that free box and resell the books. Uh, some people lost their jobs during the COVID lockdown and they've started their own businesses reselling books. Um, and, and I'm sure that some of them are rating some of the- the, uh, the um, Free the book free, sites. Yes. I was listening to a podcast a couple months back. And they had a guy on there who makes about seven, 800 bucks a month uh, on the side. And <laughs> doing, uh, he picks up couches that people are giving away for free he has a pickup truck he, he picks up these couches takes them home puts them in his garage or something and then he sells them you know sells them off one at a time for like a couple hundred bucks each and he makes like seven eight hundred bucks a month uh, on the side doing that not a bad part-time job well couches are particular do you have any animals that you live with uh, if you live with an animal or you smoke, that couch immediately goes down in value. 
um, but if you don't live with an animal and you don't smoke, I think the couch is probably perfectly fine. But gosh darn it, we have a lot of uh, uh, furniture on these on freecycle.org and on nextdoor.org. You actually still have uh, lingering televisions like the old CRT televisions. Um, yeah. The other thing is some of those traditional resale places like uh, the Salvation Army, they're not into taking couches. Oh, they get so much stuff, they have to be more particular. And I yeah. think the fraction of their stuff that they get actually ends up in the store. Um, a lot of your clothing might be end up getting shredded or turned into rags or being used to some type of stuffing for um, carpet. Uh, padding or whatever that uh, I think brown <laughs> brown elephant has couches or they used to the one on Clark Street. We also right now have a lot of office office chairs being offered right now. I also just looked around. There's a places we can get free cigarettes too. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do the world a lot of good. The uh, <laughs> in the federal government, I I represented these employees. Their property disposal is what they were called, and they would look around for charitable organizations to accept things like computers, and like you said, office chairs, even couches, brand new nice stuff, but their job is to look around and find suitable uh, nonprofit locations uh, to donate these things. I was at a place in Filson and uh, so for example, and they had computers if anybody wanted one. It wasn't the latest one, but you could ha have one if you wanted. They had a stack of them, but property disposal uh, unit uh, would look around for suitable locations to uh, donate uh, excess federal property. So, Karina, do you have any uh, do you have any ideas? Uh, any uh, cheapskate ideas that are not necessarily ne not necessarily free, but uh, ways to get things uh, really cheap? Um, there's a way to you, you go into the CVS app and you sign up with CVS. Uh, you also sign up with the Walgreens app. And then uh, what you do um, with CVS, I sometimes get coupons for $40 off an I one item that isn't on sale. So, um, you know, obviously they're looking for you and they want your information. But um, with that, uh, I can get one item that isn't, um, that isn't on sale 40% off. Now CVS tends to be more marked up from Jewel Osco, um, but, at forty percent off, that's normally a, a good deal. Um, well, Grant's also sometimes you have to read the coupons carefully because you'll have an item that costs four ninety nine, and then you'll have a four dollar coupon, but it's four dollars for two items, not just one. But occasionally, Walgreens will have a, a compound; they'll have their own deal. Plus, you'll have a manufacturer's coupon. Um, I'm not. Uh, the 40% the off coupon from CVS I've been doing and using and doing well, uh, but Walgreens, you have to learn how to, I think if I spend more time, I can kind of go with the flow of it and, and kind of learn the rhythm of it. But um, um, sometimes they, they do accident, they give things away because they have their own coupon plus a manufacturer's <coughs> coupon on top of it. And so you uh, recently they had some uh, a holiday, the new national holiday, the Juneteenth, and they were giving away Shea Moisture Soap. 
but they'll do these giveaways in order to get you into the store and in order to get you um, into the in, in into the store and maybe you'll buy some extra stuff. So how, do you, how do you find out about these things? Are they, are they, are they on uh, the CBS one? has an app that you can download and so does Walgreens and they really oh. want you to use the app. And, oh. and we're exploiting you because I'm, I'm learning more about you and your shopping habit and when you shop or where you tend to, to pick things. So it's, it's a way of getting information from you. Yeah. Dual Osco has a monopoly game uh, they also have a reward or um, with Jewel Osco, you want to sign up for their reward or their Mimex. I think they changed the name of it. They have an app too. Um, but Monopoly sucked recently. It really, they, they've changed it. I think they gave away too much in the past um, and that, that it just really, um, but now it, it's not as good and it really stinks. Um, it, it was better in the past. Uh, the last time they had Monopoly, I didn't have as much fun with it. Um, the, um, I, I regularly get discount coupons. It's like one fourth to one third off my entire purchase at CVS. You just sign up. Now the, the catch to that is the discount is not applied to any item that is for sale, on sale. Yes. So you have to watch and buy things that are not on sale. Uh, that's how I get my cat food. Because uh, I get it uh, one third off and I'll get a, a box or two for my little cats because they like, they like to eat, you know, a lot. I, I have been at Walgreens a couple times and have seen people walk out the door with big armfuls of stuff. They just went off, went on the shelves and grabbed and walked out. And I asked the clerk, I go, did you see that guy just walking out? What, he didn't pay for all that stuff. And they go, yeah, we know. They go, we, we can't, we can't do anything about it. She said, the, the police won't come and they're not allowed to try to stop them. So basically, uh, and, you know, Kim Fox is not prosecuting shoplifting under nine hundred dollars so now people can really just you can really just walk into cbs or walgreens and just grab under nine hundred dollars worth of stuff and walk out you know they used to like keep cigarettes and batteries behind the counter to be safe but now you can even see laundry products and certain shampoos get locked up yeah. you know i understood when it was coffee medicine but now, and they, and they, and at one of the Walgreens near me, they have these little anti-theft uh, devices around, like Tide, and so um, there's a OCR is uh, organized uh, retail o ORC organized retail crime. Uh, Walgreens is uh, is aware of that, but there is when you go to these swap meets and they're selling you uh, cheap uh, laundry detergent, it's it's most likely a fencing operation. Um, another thing about Jewel Osco is you may want to check out, they have these clearance uh, shelves, and sometimes there's some good stuff there. Sometimes there's not good stuff there, but I would check out the clearance uh, shelves on Jewel Osco. The other thing, if you really want to get some cheap stuff, is I know in Elgin they have some uh, flea markets in there that are really, really good. Um, they have, like, a, like I said, in Elgin, Illinois, there's a Fox Valley flea market. And uh, they have all kinds of stuff in there that you can get at drastically discounted prices. What I what I found is that some of these unique thrift stores and Goodwill and Salvation Army, they don't have. I, I think they're being used so much that they've actually kind of raised their prices and they've um, mm -hmm. uh, gone up in. Um, yeah, they have, but um, gone you up still in price. get good deals. I shall be right back. I yeah. you, you can get low prices on name brand merchandise. I the, the people who give the stuff to these stores are in higher tax brackets and they shop at the better stores. So when they give their stuff away to get the tax deduction, some of it is good is is a uh, brand name, top brands. I saw we go to Maxwell Street on occasion and they'd have all sorts of vendors of food crackers and candy and cookies, and they were a dollar a package. And they were out of date, but still, uh, the reason they, they, they cannot guarantee the quality. So it's not, they could not sell it in a store, but they had tons of them. 
normally like packages of cookies, like $4 or more, they were all $1. And I could load up more than I could carry. We also know that sometimes the shelf life, the food is still good sometimes for some foods are still good after the shelf life. They just, um, you know, we know that sometimes food is still good after the shelf life. Um, I went to um, Aldi's and I find that Aldi's has actually, they've gone up in quality, but then they've also gone up in price. Uh, of course, Aldi's is now owned by Trader Joe's, so. I was, I was gonna ask you, Karina, I used to go to a lot of plays that were put on by the colleges downtown in the campus center there on State Street. DePaul and Columbia and Roosevelt. And don't they have opening nights still that were half price or $5 or $10? Um, I know that they often, a lot of, for people who are veterans, they often will have veterans nights. Um, sometimes they pay their plays, but usually, to be honest with you, those aren't the best plays. They're trying to fill the theater up. It may have been something that didn't get a very good review. Um, I mean, these were plays. I know these were like practice plays, but uh, DePaul and the others. Uh, I used to get the reader on Thursday afternoon and check the theater section and you could the reader used to have a wonderful theater section the reader used to have a wonderful they used to cover everything uh, they really were wonderful back in the day now uh, Goodman theater has a new work series that they do every year and you can go in and I've had a wonderful it's something I look forward to every year and they have the staged readings uh, and, and they have a new works festival and a lot of um, different uh, theaters will have these, um, I think Chicago Dramatists, which is, or which focuses on writers actually, um, is that uh, they, they, would, they would have these stage readings or they have kind of, it, it would be an unfinished, uh, it would be a, a play with minimal set design and people uh, not quite reading it, but it was, it's still a work in progress and the author may be change, watching how the audience reacts and changing the play accordingly. But I've looked forward to that for a long time. Uh, that's, that's just wonderful. Um, I, I don't know if they're doing that anymore. The New Works Festival, um, it's typically, it's in the fall. Um, I have a question, very quick. Why Salvation Army Company? Why so expensive clothes? People donated. It's supposed to be like, you know, I'm not saying maybe free, but you know, it's a little bit cheaper. But somebody can answer to my question, why Salvation Army Company stuff so pretty expensive, you know? They use the money for other programs. That's the real point. They're not necessarily trying to give people free clothes. They have all kinds of training programs and stuff. And the way they fund them oh. is by selling those clothes mm -hmm. that you donate. Oh. So that so it goes for a good purpose, presumably. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. you. Go, Thank you. have to go on half price day. I just put up a link that if you want free cigarettes, go to freesmokes.net. <laughs> go make sure you get the medical link if you get that one. Yeah. Karina, you know that place on Halsted by my house on 31st? You go on Mondays and it's half price. I yes, the unique there. thrift stores, on unique thrift stores, you want, you want to go on a Monday and it's half price, correct. Right, I got nice coats, like uh, you wouldn't believe. Uh, yeah, but you really, you really, oh, the only time worthy to shop there uh, is uh, on Mondays. I agree, yeah. <clears throat> on Mondays, the people line up in the morning even uh, to get all, to get the discounts. 
I'm telling you, these these thrift stores have become very uh, they they've become very popular. So that that they they've just uh, a lot of people are uh, going yeah to the are patronizing these thrift stores. So. So, uh, Crane, I just went over to uh, Hot Ticks, <clears throat> hotticks.org. They're still around, and, uh, you know, live theater's coming back now, so you can get a lot of half-price tickets over there. They also have uh, something new on their schedule or on their menu now that I hadn't noticed before, but they actually have a, uh, a uh, section for free free plays oh, and musicals and things like that, so... That's another uh, resource, I guess, to check out. Uh, it is. Um, uh, sometimes I've actually been to like at the Den Theater, which also is somewhat, if you go to some of these places that are incubators, they'll have stage readings. And then the artistic, the director, the writer will leave, the artistic director will stay and he'll ask the audience for feedback. What worked? What didn't? Did you like this? Did you not like this? What was your you know, initial reaction to watching this play um, and, and so sometimes you you also have works in progress um, you can also get discounted tickets for um, some plays that are previews previews there'll be a woman or a man in the audience who's actually reading the lines and sometimes a character one of the characters might say line and that person will shout out the line because they're still just working through the final bumps before the the opening night uh -huh. uh, so th those are preview performances, are performances, mm -hmm. and like I said, they have a person in reading the line, you know, and if, if one of the characters loses their lines, they'll say line, and the, the dramaturg will shout the line out. Uh, so I, I used to be a saint, and uh, and actually, I, you, were, you were the one that told me about the saints, uh, so I was a saint for, I don't know, quite a few years. I haven't done it uh, a lot lately, but... Uh, but uh, another thing about the saints we should probably mention is that uh, often uh, they will they will publish uh, last minute free seats that theaters will just give to saints. You don't even have to work there that night. You know they they may have like you said maybe a preview or something. They just want to fill the place up, and some theaters will just make some tickets available and offer them to this to the saints uh, for free. And again, usually first first come first serve basis and uh, i did go see a number of shows that way as well uh, where they just wanted to have people in the audience uh, because it was like a preview night or something and like you said the director's there taking notes and they want to see where people are laughing or clapping or whatever you know to you know to to make fine fine-tune adjustments yes i used to get all kinds of postcards from different theaters regarding their upcoming programs. And if you look at the fine print, you could find the deal evenings of performances. I now, know another, it's yeah. all done online these days. Um, another thing is veterans. Uh, a lot of theaters, I know Steppenwolf has veterans nights and other theaters will have veterans nights where veterans either can see it for free or discount. Also the White Sox, they give free tickets out often to veterans. Uh, I don't know if the Cubs do, but I know the White Sox uh, will give you will get veterans tickets out. So, so how do you find out about? Did you say uh, Steppenwolf? I'm a veteran, and I've never heard of any of those programs. Uh, yes, uh, that that's correct. Um, yes, Steppenwolf. Yes, I'll send you a link, Ernie. Just a second. Same is here. Is Steppenwolf or is there a common link where they list this stuff? Are you aware of any? Because I also get some veterans uh, emails, you know, their regular uh, newsletter type things, and I've never seen anything in any of those about that. And that surprises me. Uh, <laughs> if I wanted to say that if you like Shakespeare, the Shakespeare Project of Chicago um, employs equity actors, actors to do staged readings. The, the strange thing is that most of these performances take place in suburban libraries, but by staged reading, they're very 
stage. They even do sword fights. Um, they haven't been doing much during the pandemic, but I would definitely look out for them because they're incredible performers. I've had a lot of luck too with uh, community programs at the Schomburg Public Library. My own library's done a few. And then of course, Huntley's also had a couple that have really been good. Uh, they give a lot of times, they give a lot of uh, performances for you know, people who do lectures. And I know people who have made a little money off of it by uh, speaking at public libraries before. Hey, I'm gonna send a link for the group discounts. Uh, so this is Steppenwolf and, and what they have at Steppenwolf is they have 20 tickets for $20. Uh, it's kind of like when Hamilton was doing that. Um, and, and I think you have to wait in line for that. Um, And the rush tickets and then preview performances, uh, military discounts. Um, I'm gonna send a link right now to the military discount. Um, now remember things aren't as they used to be because of um, COVID. I'll tell you what else is free. And this is something I've been involved with for years. Um, if you like uh, speech competitions, or want to see some really good uh, people who are in the art of public speaking, District 30 and District 103 Toastmasters in the fall usually have uh, uh, their area and um, their area and uh, division competitions that are open to the public. And a lot of times they have free food at these events. Uh, and a lot of them are held downtown, a lot of them in suburban areas, but you know, if you want to check out one of those uh, events, usually they'll let you in for free and they usually have a little food that's all, also set out because, you know, it's for Toastmasters and designed for a speech competition. But if you really want a good night's worth of entertainment, uh, check out the District 30 and District 103 websites. They usually have a very uh, good selection of a lot of uh, free events uh, for, you know, just, and it's all dedicated to the art of public speaking, but they do have some really good, cheaper, low cost uh, seminars and things that are really well worth it. I know I've been a part of them for the last 20 years. Especially you, Joseph, there's a good club in Elmhurst that meets at the library. That's a Toastmasters club and they have, they got a really good club down there and I know out in Huntley, I'm a member of the Fox Valley Toastmasters Club and we're going to be meeting at the uh, Algonquin Bank live in about two or three more meetings too. So um, the thing is, there's a lot of free free stuff you can do. And uh, the other thing I also want to recommend that's also free or low cost is a Fermi Lab. Right now they're closed, but they have a uh, program that lets you drive up to Wilson Hall and they have an incredibly good museum that's open to the public uh, about the uh, accelerator and about leadership. And then Argon too has a uh, free programs. I also know two up in the um, uh, library up in uh, was uh, up in the northern suburbs. So I'm forgetting what it's where it was, but they were actually doing TED talks up there for a while. Now a lot of this stuff again, you may have to register in advance for, but there is a lot of a lot of good programs out in the public libraries. Like Karina said, not just in the Chicago public library system, but you know, out everywhere. And in fact, where I'm out at, Schomburg is not too far from me. It's stdl.org. And they have an incredibly good array of lectures, almost a lot of different stuff out there. It's really neat. Since this stuff's starting to open up again, I'm sure that they're going to be having a lot of uh, lectures online. And of course, don't forget our College of Complexes thing that uh, is, well, pretty cheap. <laughs> Well, Tim, it's 8.30. Uh... Well, I had uh, added a couple links to some military discounts on the chat. Ernie, if you want to look at the okay, chat. Okay, take a look. Now, I try, I saved the chat a little while ago. I know there's a way to save the chat, but right. I don't know how to find it. In other words, it, you go to those three little dots and then click Save Chat. But where does it go? It says Show and Fold. Oh, there, Show and Folder. But I yeah. don't know. Meeting save chat. I have no yeah. idea. Either download or documents. Yeah, but I can't seem. Well, okay, I'll look. 
I'll yeah, look. but it's 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 there. Go to your recent files. They're usually good. All right. Um, okay. Are we at all done with the question period? Because now we can go into rebuttals. I'm not rebutting tonight, but we do have a we do have a few minutes left, and if anybody's got a chance to rebut, um, go ahead and rebut. So, I'll who has a rebuttal? By the way, no, Charlie's got one. Um, anybody else? Uh, Joseph, you have one. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I'll say a couple words. All right, I'll go five minutes each then. Right, who wants to go first? Bob, you go first. Okay, I just wanted to mention. Uh couple of uh, film opportunities now um, Gene Siskel I mean, you know, these are these are things that you know you're not really free but I mean if you volunteer uh, you can get to see uh, a lot of great free movies and uh, the Gene Siskel Film Center is uh, right downtown I don't volunteer there but I, I do I have friends that, that do and uh, they're they're reopening August 6th so I'm, I'm not certain uh, what uh, their uh, specific requirements are going to be, if they're still going to make us pretend like the pandemic is still here and wear masks or, or what. I'm not one for wearing masks uh, sitting in a theater, but, um, but it is going to open August 6th. They do have volunteers. You can probably go over there and check and see if they have any volunteer openings. Um, Facets Multimedia, where I have been a volunteer, for 20 years, uh, I, I think is going to reopen it sometime, but I still, I just checked their website and I don't see any official announcement, uh, you know, so they're, they're still not open, there, but they, they also have volunteers and, uh, and you only need to work uh, three shifts a month and the shifts are generally from like their three hour shift or almost three hours, six, like 6.30 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. typically they just do three of those a month and then you can see the movie that's playing uh, while you're there so i've seen a lot, a lot of great films and i've seen a lot of you know they have special events they have uh you know directors occasionally come in and have uh face-to-face -face q a's and uh things like that they occasionally have retrospectives uh and, and festivals and you know you may find yourself going three four five days in a row to a retrospective or to a festival. And, uh, and generally, uh, uh, volunteers are generally admitted to for free to all that stuff. Unless there's something really popular and they're, you know, they have sellout crowds, then, then you can't get in for free. But, uh, but you know, they, you know, having a full sellout is not, not uh, that big of a worry. It doesn't happen that often. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Chicago filmmakers up on Clark is also a, I guess, a nonprofit place, and they they also uh, look for volunteers. And I've no, I don't know anybody that volunteers there, but I have been there to see a few films in the past, and uh, so that's another place to look in if you're, you know, if you're up in that north side area somewhere, and you want to see, uh, you know, some films for free. So these are things sort of like the Saints. You know, you're sort of like, you know, you're trading your time uh, to see these see these films. Uh, for for free, uh, so you know that's that's worth you know worth looking into. Uh, but you know if you want to just see stuff at a discount, you don't have maybe the time availability. Uh, you can become a member of these places. You know, there's a Facets has a membership. I think it's uh, like ten dollars a month, and you can see all the movies they have every all month for free. You know, th this is live. You know, in in-person movies, you know, go to the movie theater. Uh, and then you can uh, buy additional tickets. Like you can buy like an additional ticket for like $5. And then you know, that also allows you to rent uh, with a $10 a month price. You can also, in addition, this is crazy. You can also get one free DVD from the, uh, from the, VD, the DVD rental place in the same building. So for ten dollars a month, you can get a one v one one DVD at a time. Now you can come there every day and get a different DVD and take one back, but you're allowed to have one checked out at all times. And then you can go see all the movies. <laughs> every movie you, you get free admission when you're a member. So that is a great deal. And you're looking at what 120 bucks a year, ten dollars a month, very cheap. And I, I myself prefer much prefer seeing 
movies as they're meant to see, be seen on the big screen and not sitting at home watching it on your laptop or your phone or something like that or a TV. Now, maybe a large screen TV might not be so bad, <laughs> something I don't, I don't have. Um, and again, Cisco also has a membership. I can't remember exactly what it is because of COVID. I didn't renew, uh, you know, when my membership expired. But I think it's generally about about sixty five dollars a year. I think for an individual, and at that price, and that gives you a discount on the tickets. And I think you could buy a ticket for six dollars or seven dollars instead of like ten. So if you know, if you see. Uh, you know, quite a few movies like I tend to do, uh, then it's, you know, it's, it's worth it. And uh, I really like Siskel because it's just a few blocks from where I work and uh, it's close to the train and everything. Um, now the downside to nighttime entertainment now, as I see it, is that Chicago has vastly changed from the, before the pandemic from 2019. They've, opened up the homeless shelters and let everybody out because of the COVID. They've opened up the jails and let everybody out. Uh, it's Kim Fox and uh, Lori Wright administration or Lori Lightfoot. It's a total disaster. You know, they're not prosecuting minor crimes. So we have a lot of nefarious people uh, you know, lingering around the streets, especially downtown, where if you're like me, you know, you have to commute back and forth on a train, you got to get down there and I don't drive. So I take public transportation or walk and, uh, you know, you can encounter these people and it's kind of, kind of risky. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of trouble. I highly recommend getting the free app for your phone called Citizen so you can be aware of what's going on. But you'd, you'd be surprised how often there's, you know, reports of people, uh, you know, on a red on the red line with a, with a knife, you know, at the red line station, somebody yielding and wielding a knife, or somebody, you know, showing a gun or some kind of thing like that. A lot of crime downtown. It really makes me nervous, and I don't really like staying downtown anymore after dark. I've been uh, pretty much getting out of there. When I get out of work, I take the 601 train home and don't come back to the next morning. Like I said, there's just there's too few cops on the street. The cops aren't willing to uh, uh, enforce the laws as much now anymore, and uh, and these all these criminals out there are empowered after they got away with basically murder uh, for the last you know couple of years under Lori Lightfoot and uh, Kim Fox with. Uh, you know, with all the looting and the breaking in and everything. So they're emboldened. They know that the, the you know, that the cops aren't going to arrest them because of COVID and things like that. So they're, uh, you know, I've known a friend of mine was uh, attacked. Uh, a guy uh, ran up to her. She's a photographer like myself. And uh, she had a fairly expensive camera hanging around her neck. And this guy ran up with a knife and went to cut the, the strap of her camera so he could grab it and run off with it. But he, she, she, she kind of fought back and the blade of the can, the blade of the knife went under the top plate of the camera. Now it was a new camera, a new Fuji and they have a plastic plasticized parts and that his knife went under the plasticized top plate, snapped it off and then severed a ribbon cable uh, underneath, which basically ruined her camera now they did catch the guy and of course he was a frequent flyer and he's and he, he you know he's got no money so she was not able to re, you know collect on any of her damages and she had to buy a she had to buy a new camera so she's just out you know i think she replaced it with a used one but still she, her new one can cost about 600 and she had to spend about 400 to replace it but uh so anyway that's the thing about being downtown it's uh you know, being out in Chicago anywhere after dark anymore under the new, uh, you know, this new woke democratic leadership we have, it's just not safe to be out. So take advantage of this free stuff, but do in the daytime. And, uh, you know, I'd say, if you're gonna, especially if you're going to be going to places to meet people to pick up free stuff, I would carry a weapon. Okay, that's it.
Bob, All right. Bob, you know, uh, I would like to tell you, thank you so much because I'm from different country and, you know, and we heard only from radio or TV about American, uh, what's going on with the crimes here. Uh, and right now I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of upset a little bit because what I heard from first, you know, like from first mouth, if I may say, uh, what you said, it's incredible. Uh, you know, um, in Russia also some crimes, but not like that, not like that. And it's very sad and I don't know, government need to do something about it to protect, uh, protect public because people vote for them. And it's very sad they, you know, they, they don't have responsibility to do, uh, they don't do not much. And people need to be more enthusiastic and more aware of it to maybe not protest and not, you know, big screaming, but something need to be done about this, stop those crimes. Because what I heard right now, it's real. It's real what I heard in Russia. But thanks so much. I'm a citizen. <laughs> now I'm proud of it. And uh, thank you so much. And thanks so much for to, to this country to provide a, for us freedom, freedom of speech and so much freedom. We have to treasure this and say thank you. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Thank you for educating me. Thank you so much. Okay, who's next? Okay, we had three rebuttals. Uh, I, I know. Okay, Ernie, go ahead. I just, I just want to uh, comment what uh, Elena is talking about. Uh, I have friends who, who, who send me comments all the time and news stories and pictures and you know this is what the world thinks of Chicago. Most of theirs are inaccurate. They don't describe the real problem, but I agree that the, uh, the situation with crime is, is out of control. Uh, we don't punish, we haven't punished criminals very much for years, for, for as long as I can remember. And uh, at some point, the chickens are going to come home to roost. And uh, uh, it, it's, I am sure that the crime is one of the reasons that we lost uh, when I when I moved here, you know, quite a few years ago, I won't say quite how many, but a long time ago, uh, the population of the city was three and a half million. It's now 2.7 million. And uh, I think the main reason that people left, uh, or, or one of the main reasons, is the fact that in certain neighborhoods in particular uh, have, have had a particularly... Uh, bad time with with population leaving and i think that has a lot to do with it now I, it doesn't bother me i don't worry about it i go on the l any time of the day or night and i go pretty much anywhere in the city certain neighborhoods maybe not uh any time of the day or night i've not had any real problems but uh it it is worrisome to see how crimes both by the police against uh against uh uh, people that they're they're trying to arrest, and uh, the people they're trying to arrest committing crimes and not being uh, punished. I think that may be part of the reason the police are as frustrated as they are. But uh, yeah, they 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 claim that uh, the recidivism rate, or, or not the recidivism rate, but the 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 rate of people who are let out without cash bond. This, this new rule that, you know, you don't have to put up a cash bond if you can't. Uh, supposedly only 1% of those people uh, commit another crime, or at least until they're, you know, they go to trial. I, I'm skeptical of that figure. Uh, I don't know, Loyola came up with 3%. That doesn't sound like very much either. And the, uh, some study group in Utah of all places came up with a much higher figure. Now, what do they know in Utah? I don't know, but I think that they, <laughs> they may have a more objective view of Chicago than those of us here in the city do. Anyway, I just wanted to sympathize with Elena on that. And uh, 
uh, the, I've not, uh, you know, I've, I've, well, I've had my car broken into a few years ago and this kind of thing, but not too much. Oh, and, and another thing, people in my building have been broken into and all of the hallways have cameras, but they would not let the people who had their apartments broken into, broken into, probably or there was key. Somebody had a key. Okay. Uh, it wasn't if the door was broken down or Jimmy, uh, there, there are cameras and this is all on videotape somewhere, but they won't, they won't let people look at it. Okay. And I've heard of that in other cases too, where people have lost things and they, they were probably on video, but no, they won't show you the video, which I find, uh, find odd. Let's put it that way. Anyway, that's enough for now. Maybe somebody has some rebuttals to my rebuttal, which isn't really a rebuttal of Karina. Her, Karina, okay. your presentation was fabulous. Thank you. All right, uh, Joseph, you wanted to say something? Get unmute. Don't forget, Joseph, to unmute. You oh, got, okay. we'll, give you, we'll give you five minutes, okay? Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> um, Miss, uh, Miss Kashush, um, it was a very, uh, very useful uh, presentation, uh, laudable, commendable. Uh, I applaud you. Uh, a lot of people uh, can uh, take advantage of uh, what you shared. So bless your heart. <clears throat> now, thank you. Coming to rebuttal. Uh, well, I don't know what to rebut. Uh, <laughs> then the very idea here. <clears throat> uh, and I heard in between. Uh, I think Tim said that in the United States, nobody has to be hungry or something to that effect. Uh, so my rebuttal is that the need for a such charity and the state of affairs has to do with capitalism itself. And this is a side effect of capitalism. And the United States being the Mecca of capitalism, this is a necessary evil and will continue. Um, I know people who get thrown under the bus uh, when the cycle of capitalism goes up and down, <clears throat> now exacerbated because of this pandemic. Uh, but some of them are ashamed and not used to asking for charity and they stay in the pit uh, in low profile. So the long-term solution to avoid such poverty or state of affairs or need is to empower the people, strengthen social security. Or if I um, use the scripture, uh, teach the people to fish rather than giving fish in charity. Uh, back to you, Tim. Is that all you wanted to say, Joe? As a rebuttal, yes. Okay, okay. Um, well, uh, that was okay. All right, Charlie, I guess you're next. Okay, first of all, let's thank Karina for a really good detailed analysis of uh, yes, yes. economics here in the city. And thank you for uh, the handout, which I will post. I'll be eclectic as usual here. Uh, yes, uh, you know, I lived in a rural area for a number of years. And I used to hear all about crime in the cities. <laughs> these, these yahoos were afraid of cities. Uh, all sorts of nefarious things, uh, much like we heard from Brother Bob here. Uh, at one time, I did not leave the loop for a period of three months. And I worked downtown for 35 years, and I never saw one crime. 
I don't saw poor people for that matter. Uh, Lois and I, for a period of three months, we never left the loop and we used to go to things every single evening. I don't know how we managed to survive this, but I guess it was a matter of sheer luck uh, to come out alive. So I don't know about the inability to survive in, in the loop in that regard. I'm also surprised that I often hear that, oh, capitalism, oh, it's a system that works. Well, then why are there, why are there food pantries? I asked, in mean, the system that's working, uh, the reality is, is that people, even if they are working, are about two weeks away from poverty. So it's a very tenuous uh, system here at best. Um, regarding the crime, I and my associates, we put together a report on crime for the uh, one of the TV stations, Channel 7, particularly crime on CTA, and our analysis isn't quite what I what I heard about tonight here. You're safer on CTA than you are on the streets, in fact. Um, the on a totally different subject, this book, book little libraries, right out of library school, I was in charge of a I put together a public library. And I had paperback books and I had displays all over town in taverns and grocery stores, uh, little grocery stores in the country. And I, uh, the only each one had a label that said, read and return when you want. They were not checked out. I'd restock them. They were just paperback books. Uh, and I had them all over town. Uh, it, it, and it worked quite well. Matter of fact, I got I got the award of the librarian in a year for that among other projects. So I was decades ahead of everyone else. Uh, let's see another thing else. Um, the, if you like free movies uh, without going to a theater, there's a new website, relatively new, called Tubi, T-U-B-I. And there's all kinds of movies uh, you can watch for free. They do have commercial interruptions, but actually I found any number of rather interesting foreign language films, in particularly those made in Russia, uh, in a historical nature. It's T-U-B-I, very simply, three movies and you register. Another good source online, if you like, it costs me $10 a month, but I have access to the library of the great courses, subject, great course, lectures, academic lectures on every subject you can imagine. And now they have shorter ones, which are brief uh, programs, uh, individual ones. But you can take an entire course uh, as you would in a college um, semester or quarter system. Uh, that's the great courses. It's only 10 bucks. It's well worth it. I find enough. Another, I get it free at my library. This is the whole library of the great courses. I know. And I used to buy them. And they don't, that's, this is the whole library, Tim. And they don't have, your library does not have a fraction of the uh, shelf that is available. That's why I subscribe. So I used to buy them online and this i've given up on doing that um all right the next thing is c-span is another good thing don't forget to overlook that they have spectacular lectures the best lectures by certain professors and if you hunt around you can find them also as a federal employee many many years ago i again i was ahead of you guys and I set up something called a green room in the federal center complex. And any excess office materials, telephones, you name it, people would bring and deposit in the green room. And uh, it, it was free office supplies, extra office supplies, 
particularly if an office moves, everything under the sun, all sorts of equipment, anything relevant to uh, 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 office environment. Um, let's see, uh, I, okay, I've covered crime and everything. The next thing is, um, I'm rather interested in this garden plot. Now, I got a, an empty backyard in my front yard too. And you say you can rent it out for 85. I'm willing to rent a plot of land that anybody wants in my backyard for 50 bucks. Yeah. If you want to use my hose, that's going to cost you another 10 bucks. So if you want water, but if you want to feel the need to do gardening, uh, see me and I'll set you up. I'll give you, you know, a little plot of land and you can go to it, you know. Okay, that was a lot of fun and uh, okay. we got a lot of attention on this. By the way, the thing about food drives too, I know this at there it used to be a thing where they had food drives uh, at various places for canned goods and things like that. It was my understanding that the food depository would rather have cash donations uh, yes. They yes. Things more economically in bulk. And yes. Wholesale, and those food drives. They said we'd rather not have to deal with it. But uh, you know that, Karina. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna go about three or four minutes because in this thing, you know, we're all looking for some good sources of information. And I just want to show you uh, some of the best websites that I see for free that give you some uh, news broadcasts that are actually a little bit out of the mainstream. But I'll just show you some of the stuff that I've used outside of, um, you know, the United States that, that really can give you a different view. It's all for free. But uh, if I'll share my screen here for a minute or two, you know. Uh, we'll just, I'll just be very brief on this stuff. Um, the first one, okay, I'm going to get my screen here. All right. Can everybody see the Google screen up there now? Okay. The first thing I want to show you is, uh, yeah. press TV, press T TV mm -hmm. dot, dot it's called dot com. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Press TV.org. I just had it up here and must have, uh, uh, they must have taken it down. Used to be the website for the Iranian, oh, let's try it again. And uh, because they used to have, uh, PressTV.com used to uh, be the official website for the Iranian uh, news broadcasting sites. And it looks like it was seized by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but they used to uh, have the uh, national broadcast. The other one I want to show you is uh, France24.com. This is uh, the website for um, every time. This is the website where you can uh, um, never allow these things here. But you can get live news broadcasts on here from France. Um, we have the BBC. You can get the radio or TV broadcast news in here as well. They also have a live feed. The other one is uh, the Deutsche Welle out of Germany. I think it's called a... Chevella, I believe, um, and that's uh, DW.com. Oh, that, okay. I think it's W-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Yeah, it, it is, but it's also known as DW.com. They, too, have live feeds for the stuff. Charlie, you'll like this one. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I think it's, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it, what it's called. It's the it's the one for the Russians, and I think it's called uh, what is it? Uh, RT.com. RT is Russian, right? Yeah, it's it's Russian television. 
And the other one is a CLTV or C, uh, China, China English. I, I, I use sometimes I watch these China English CL, no, CN. Uh, Yeah, CNTV News, China National Television, English, CN, CCTV, I'm sorry. But it too is from China. They also have their news broadcasts in English. And there's also a lot of good documentaries on here. More of the communist socialist bent with the mix of capitalism. But it does give a lot of the good propaganda for the uh, Ministry mm -hmm. of whatever. So... You know, if you want to look at some other uh, stuff, and then, of course, you also have Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya and a lot of the other Middle Eastern broadcasts that come out. And all this is for free. But if you take a look at some of our main news stories that are on the um, they're on the air and you want a really different bent or a different viewpoint than what you get on Fox or some of the other stuff, you would be best to... Uh, find some of these other other alternate sites i'm going to stop my share um if i can get here i'll stop my share on the screen but uh, i'm sorry i'm trying to get to it again um damn it. I'm, I'm sorry i'm trying to get get my yeah i could go back here i want to get to the meeting meeting controls uh, come on pause share stop share okay there we go but that's some of the stuff I've used myself to uh, go into news broadcasts. You can find it. One of the better ones, actually, I found is France 24. They are usually pretty good, funded by the government of France. And, of course, we all know about the BBC. Locally, um, the one best news source I like on the radio, as uh, probably all of us know, is National Public Radio, 91.5 FM out of Chicago. And, of course, I know they got, the, they got that jazz station out of DuPage County. That's pretty good. And then WNIJ out of Rockford, which is 89.5. But at night, uh, and WNIJ and WBEZ broadcast the BBC World Service, which also is a good source for international news. I have it on a lot at night on my computer. And it really, you know, just looking at some of these foreign news broadcasting websites, even just for 10 minutes or something, might give you a little bit of different perspective. Charlie, you would like RT. I don't know if you've watched it before or not, but it would uh, definitely talks about the American imperialists and the benefits of the and the and and the problems of the capitalist system for quite a while. Uh, Our and, problem is too much government and not enough capitalism. I would tend to agree with you, Bob. Um, but you know, uh, it, there's a lot out there. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for cheap or good stuff, I always recommend going to eBay. Um, and Karina, again, I want to say thank you very much because oh, I've, done, I've done some of these things. I used to know the Civic Orchestra used to run free concerts that I used to do with my friend Ali a lot. Particularly that I also want to recommend the uh, one with the free city tours where they open up the city on the weekend. It does take some work to get to them, but they uh, a lot of the stuff Karina has recommended you know has been great and the best way I think to uh, go see the city is in those Chicago architecture tours at architecture.org it's well worth uh, going down into a neighborhood and learning about it even though the tours may cost 10 15 bucks each <laughs> you can get a membership and really uh, learn the city which is what I did back in why don't you come to Bridgeport and for 10 bucks, I'll show you around Bridgeport. I actually had a tour of Bridgeport, Charlie. And uh, <laughs> we found a lot of good stuff in there. 10 bucks, cheap. Well, Charlie, the thing is, uh, we wound up, I wound up actually on that particular tour. I did a Bridgeport. I did not know, but at the tour guide took us on, a, he took, took, took us, uh, took the entire tour group. We ate at a restaurant called uh, Happy Foods. And he said he loved it. Little did I know that I was talking to a Tribune reporter. And about a week later, the entire tour and my name and Allie's name and a few other tour members were in the Tribune. And it was probably one of the nicest experiences I had with the Chicago Architecture Foundation. I didn't know they had a Buddhist temple down there, nor did the tour guide because Allie stuck her nose in the door and uh, 
we wound up having a Buddhist monk talk to us at that time. But it was a very, very good tour. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. McHenry County has a lot of festivals and things like this, you know, free concerts in the park. In fact, Franklin Park, I did not know where I work at seven o'clock on Tuesday nights having free concerts. We have one, uh, whether we have them on the river, where there's a lot of people that come and there's boats on the river and all that stuff. And you can really see some good stuff. You just look around a little bit. Tim, on Tuesday, where? Three concerts, which park? In Franklin Park, Illinois. It's- uh, Hold on, let me make louder. Okay. It's- Where? It's North Park in Franklin Park, Illinois. It's not near you. It'd be about a 30 minute drive from you. Oh, okay. It's two towns south of the airport. Oh. But uh, you know, it's it's there. You could find stuff there too with the Chicago Park District that they got them. Mm -hmm. I know they used to run a lot of uh, events up in, uh, there was a park up north that had a little pocket zoo in it that they used to run <clears throat> on Sundays at uh, three o'clock where they had, you know, mini concerts for orchestras and things like that. That Alley Millennium Park has opened up again. Well, oh, that's good. Park Orchestra has almost a full season. And that's, on, I don't remember exactly where it is, but you can get it online. Yeah, and there, there's just, there's a lot of stuff. But just look around at your lectures, your writers. Anyway, that's my rebuttal. I'm sorry I took a little too long here, but. Charlie, please don't forget to send me, like you told me, this uh, important site about uh, free, like, health, whatever it's called, health. That you can remember? You told me you will send. Yeah, it yeah. We've been over Thank there. you. We've been over it. I was going to say, Millennial Park, when they Thank you. the old shell. Uh, it was well worth an investment uh, to get some sort of season ticket holder. You know my email, right? Please let me talk. Do you know my email? Please, please let me talk, Ileana. I'm uh, talking about Grand Park. It was well worth the little investment uh, in the to get seating. Uh, if you're uh, old or whatever, um, and you had. Like she said, you got to get there early too. That's the trick to a lot of these things. And, and Charlie, if I could ask you, you said something about an app or a website for foreign films, and I didn't get the name of it. It's T U B I. C as in hat. No, Tubi, T U B I. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm using that. Yeah, there's a lot of. I've, I've used that too myself. It's it's a good site. I like it. Yeah. Tubi.com. I'm looking for German films, and they they've had some. You know, I've watched all kinds of Nazi films. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> come on! World War Two films. Yeah, not no, good. I don't want to see World War II films. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of them. I think you can watch Triumph of the World for free on YouTube. There's also uh, let me uh, <laughs> don't forget we got our we got our free video library of the College of Past College of Complexes episodes too. Yeah. That'll be okay. Yeah, Tim, I gotta, I gotta uh, I got a little more rebuttal to give here. A little more. If you don't more mind, if, if nobody minds, uh, go ahead. So tomorrow starts the free Sundays on State program. I, I don't know what the weather is going to be, but this kicks off at 11 a.m. and goes to 7 p.m. They're blocking State Street off uh, to traffic from uh, Madison to Lake, and they're supposed to have all kinds of stuff going on. Free entertainment. They're going to have dining, which I imagine you probably have to pay something for the food, but um, they're supposed to have fun and games and things like that. And I don't really know totally what it's going to be like. I, I may go down if the, uh, if the weather is, uh, you know, not too bad. I don't really want to go in the rain, but uh, this sounds kind of interesting, but they have a, you know, if you just search on the on Google for Sundays on state, you'll find a little, web page about it yep. and too dangerous, too What's dangerous. oh this is the daytime oh is, but i'm sure now i'm sure it's going to be well, i'm sure it's going to be infested with with uh you know homeless people or you know and, and uh uh just panhandlers 
like like the loop is normally. So yeah, I expect every 50 feet you're gonna have at least some person, one person, you know, shaking a cup at you or asking you for a couple of bucks. Watch out for cons. Uh, the big con is always uh, I'm stranded. I need some money for train fare. I hear I've been hearing that for 50 years. So don't fall for those cons. Don't give them any money. That just encourages them. So if the uh, guy says, "Brother, can you spare a dime?" What should I say? Fuck off. Get a job, you lazy bum. <laughs> So, um, so I also wanted to mention, you know, Charlie was talking about the great courses. I wanted to mention, uh, yeah, Hills, Hillsdale College online offers free online courses and they got good ones, politics, history, philosophy, you know, et cetera. I put a link to it over there on the, uh, in the chat. And I've actually taken a couple of those and they are really good, man. They're taught by great people like, uh, 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 Victor Davis Hansen teaches uh, some cl some classes there on you know some ancient history, uh, which is you know ancient Western uh, history, which is quite interesting. And, you know, and the battles in you know in Greece, like between uh, um, uh, oh, I forgot the uh, uh, you know the major you know major early Greek battles, you know things like that, the Grecian Wars, and uh, the fantastic. Anyway, but they're free. The Federalist and, uh, Papers. They got one on the Federalist Papers and the Great American. Yeah, they got great. They, all, that's all libertarian nonsense. Oh, shut up, Charlie. And, uh, and then also, a post for the, Trump, they invited my, Trump to give a speech. I put a link there. Or we're not a link, but I, mean, I just made a note there that the Free Citizen app is available on Google Play or the Apple App Store for your phone. And again, if, let me tell you how this works. You uh, you download this thing and then you activate it. Then it'll, it'll you know, watch your location and then it'll alert you to crime that's happening near you. So you can, you know, either avoid it or maybe you want to be an onlooker and go see it. But it'll tell you, it'll say like, you know, 42 minutes ago, you know, man, uh, uh, wielding knife on platform of red line at, at state and then Monroe or something like that. So you're, you know, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll watch where you're at and it'll tell you if there's active shooter events or anything like that, you'll get alerts to it. Like I said, you get alerts of crime that's, you know, near, nearby you. So that's not a bad thing to have just to keep your eyes open and see what's, you know, what's going on. Well, Bob, thanks for that link for the Hillsdale college. I just clicked on it. There's yeah. some really, really, really good courses. Oh, I know. You could just you could just spend uh, you know days and days are taking these courses, and they're all self you know they're all self uh, paced. So you uh -huh. know you take the course and then you can kind of it'll track you. You can take a quiz and you know see you know track your progress and things like that. Mathematics and logic from Euclid to modern geometry. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And there, there's one down here I, I think I might look into. Uh, it was C, uh, the introduction, an introduction to C.S. Lewis, Writings and Significance, Winston Churchill and Statementship. One Charlie ought to take a look at called the Federalist Papers. What? Wow. Oh, you really do learn some stuff. All free. Yeah. I will have to also say this about the C-SPAN archive. Um just go to book TV and they have a, usually a lecture by a lot of good authors. And that's where I usually find out where a lot of my get, get a, a good source for a lot of my audio books are. So, you know, and it, 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 it is a great site. Um, yeah, it's good to go to this, this college because all the other college courses are by lefty commies. Uh, well, right. At least so, you, yeah, when you go to the, uh, Recommend the website with three shooters there. You're not going to have a bunch of that's the wackiest college race theory jammed on your throat. That's a college in the moon. All right, let's let Karina have the last word. Okay, so we can get going. I mean, it's 9 25, and I know we are All right. enjoying this stuff. So, Karina, please speak the last word and close us out. 
All right. Uh, thank you all for attending my lecture. I hope my list comes useful for you. I like the fact that some of you had additional uh, free things. Um, <clears throat> A couple other things you can do to be cheap, uh, carry a water bottle and then go to the fountains. Don't buy bottled water, carry a water bottle, go to the fountains and refill your water bottle. If you have, um, if you buy, let's say cheese or snacks and they come in a bag with a Ziploc or um, top, you can recycle those bags. Uh, you can wash them out and reuse them. Um, and the biggest thing that I like while I'm cheapskate is uh, if I'm driving, I usually go to a Speedway or a Thornton's and they usually have a can of Coke for under a buck, which is pretty yeah. good. Um, and uh, so that's um, the other thing too. And uh, uh, the veterans, I think the uh, American military veterans need to do more research and figure out what other things they can get for free. Cause there's a lot of things that are given out to veterans for free. Uh, and I think you have to research that. Um, of course, you have the VA for healthcare too. Uh, and um, you can find other things for free just as a matter of how good you are at researching and, and looking things up on the web. And um, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I've enjoyed this time and uh, thank you, Charlie, for letting me speak. Right. Charlie, can you uh, briefly review where you can find that document again at Karina's? I know we put it in the chat. We've been able to download it during the program, but just briefly it's review what you can find. It on the website. The What's College of Complexes dot org website. Uh, yeah, for for those of you who are somewhat new to the college or haven't been here before, I'll I'll show you what the College of Complexes website looks like real quick, just to uh, give me ten just minutes. And I'll put it up. I I know Charlie. It's uh, it's as, hard I, about going to the website. A lot of people they don't, don't know, know. They don't know how to do that? Come on. No, I'm just going to show them where it's posted. I don't know how to go to our website. Okay, well, all right, Charlie, I won't do it. And it's not posted yet. I know that, but I was just going to show them where the website was. They've never Collegeofcomplexes.org. So, Tavi, if you go there, you should be able to find it without much trouble. Google and he'll probably be posting the document fairly shortly after the lecture. Okay, anything else? I'd like to ask Karina if the reader is still being published. I used to get a lot of ideas for free things there. And if so, where do I find it? Uh, the reader is actually, technically it's still being published. It's been reorged. It's a new organization that's kind of a, a nonprofit uh, oh. organization and it's much smaller than what it used to be. Uh, Charlie really hit a nerve because when I first moved to Chicago, the reader was in four separate sections and they had the entertainment section and the entertainment section just had, um, they, they covered all the plays, all the plays. Awesome. And, um, and, you know, they just, uh, they stopped doing that and, and that's just, um, uh, kills me. Um, yeah. Well, they still got a website that's active called ChicagoReader.com. But, you know, it's <laughs> a, shame a lot of the print advert, a lot of the print stuff's gone to the web. Mm. And, and we've had Ben Jarofsky talk at the college a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Bob Matter took care to mention some great things that are happening in the loop, but I also uh, just want to keep in people's minds that Chicago has neighborhoods and some there's some great things that happen in, in your local neighborhoods as well. The library system stands throughout and each library has something, you know, special to offer and uh, the park systems and, and so also look at your own neighborhood and see what's what's in your neighborhood and, and that's um, uh, uh, in addition to the loop. Uh, in Grant Park and Millennial Park, there's, there's sometimes some wonderful off offerings that are in your uh, very local neighborhood. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You just, guys are Cooper. We've been on here a long time, so you're all. Stop the recording now. <laughs>